Brand disclaimer, the views and opinions expressed by individuals on this platform, the callers plus invited guests are their own. The information you hear does not reflect the overall views of all parties associated with this brand. We encourage everyone to research all things heard live or via archive for edification purposes. Discretion is advised. Don't touch that dial. You're now listening to the Big Talk Free Radio. Help keep the show on the air. If you want to help, you can send your donation to PayPal. The email is you at gmail.com or through Cash App, dollar sign Sal Showtime. Thanks for your support. Started, guys. Let me open up Stanley's phone line. Hold on for a second. Can you hear me, guy? Can you hear me? I hear you. Yes. All right. So let me set this timer and go ahead. Hello, brothers and sisters. Happy Sabbath. Shabbat Shalom. I hope all is well. I thank Brother Minister for being here tonight, and I thank thank you, Brother Sal, for inviting me here. And I hope I can shed some light in some areas in my opening. Is Jesus God? That's a very good question that one can be asked, but it can be confusing as well because the word God has many different views attached to it. Tonight, I'll be focusing on the God of Christianity that is displayed from the Christian Bible. Now, I want to focus on the word one. Based on Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. I, hold, I currently hold a monotheist position, which means that we believe in one God. But what do we mean by one God? See, brother ministers and others like brother ministers um, that believe it. So when, you, when you see the word one God, they actually see one person. When I see God, when I see the term one God, I see one group of persons that make up the one God. At first glance of my statement, one would, one would say to themselves, that doesn't make any logical sense. I understand why one can come to that conclusion. Earthly language is not compatible with spiritual language. What do I mean by that? Spiritual language does not make earthly sense, but it definitely makes spiritual sense. In many cases of Scripture, we do not question the use of spiritual language, but when it comes to God, we have our reservations. For instance, when we read Genesis chapter 2, verse 24, it says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. One flesh, which is echad basar, means one person. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 19, verses 5 to 6, it says, and, and, said, and he said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Wherefore, they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath Therefore, God had joined together, let not man put us under. You look at the married couple, and you clearly see two individuals. How in the world could anyone say that is one flesh? That is because you are looking at it with your earthly eyes if you don't see that. However, God sees it as one flesh. Notice it doesn't say one, meaning in understanding or one in mind. It says one flesh or one person. The scriptures continues to add in Genesis chapter 5 verse 1 and 2, this is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God had created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day they were created. Why did God give them one name? Because, brothers and sisters, God sees them as one flesh, and one flesh can have one name. Even the demons understood this kind of language. If you look in Mark chapter 5, it's talking about the, um, 
the lesion that possessed the individual. It was starting verse 2, it says here, and when he, Jesus, was come out of the ship, immediately they met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit, an unclean spirit, singular. Drop down to verse 8, it says, for he, Jesus, said unto him, come out of this man, thou unclean spirit, singular. Verse 9, and he asked him, what is thy name? And he, singular, answered and saying, my name, singular, is legion, for we, plural, are many. Drop down to verse 12. And all the devils, plural, besought him, saying, send us, plural, into the swine, that we may enter into them. Verse 13. And forthwith, Jesus gave them, plural, leave, and the unclean spirits, plural, went out and entered into the swine. Now check verse 16 out. And they saw that it was told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil, singular, and also concerning the swine. You see, this is spiritual language, brothers and sisters. You can clearly see the back and forth with the singularity and plurality. Until you understand and speak the spiritual language, you will always come up with flaws, nonsense, and even contradictions. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Mighty God. The God of the Old Testament is sometimes referred to the mighty God. If you were to ask any of the prophets of old, who is the mighty God? They would tell you it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The mighty God of Jacob or Israel is the mighty God of the Old Testament. It is the God that delivered Israel out of Egypt. Yes, let us provide some scriptures from the prophets. Please write these scriptures down, brothers and sisters. David knew the name of his God. If you read in Psalms chapter 50, verse 1, it says, The mighty God, which is the Lord Yahweh, has spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun to the going down thereof. Jeremiah knew the name of his God. If you go to Jeremiah 32, verse 18, it says, Thou showest loving kindness unto thousands and recompensest the iniquity of the fathers into the bosom of their children after them. The great, the mighty God, the Lord of hosts, is his name. Even Isaiah the prophet understood that the mighty God was the name of the God of the Old Testament, which, was, which clearly was his God. Look at Isaiah chapter 10, verse 21. It says here, the remnant shall return, which is, or even the remnant of Jacob, unto who? The mighty God. So David called him the mighty God. Jeremiah called him the mighty God. Even Isaiah called him the mighty God. So we can be confident, brothers and sisters, that one of God's name of the Old Testament scriptures is called the mighty God. Hallelujah. This is where the rubber meets the road, brothers and sisters. Since Isaiah was one of those that recognized this name, Isaiah rebuked idolatry in the Israel camp many times. You can read it in Isaiah chapter 1. You can read it in chapter 8, even throughout his own book even. So he would never, ever call a mere human being the mighty God. So we have a situation here that we have to examine. Let us go to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, which is only a prior, verse, or prior chapter to Isaiah 10 that we just read. It says here, for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. His name shall be called what? Wonderful, okay. Counselor, okay. The mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Wait, 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 wait. wait. The mighty God? A, a child is born? A, a son is given? Wait, wait. What would any, what, what, why would anyone name a human being the mighty God? That would be utterly blasphemy, brothers and sisters. This would be another form of idolatry. Therefore, at this point alone can close any conversation, any debate, any argument about what the prophets were expecting. The, that the mighty God would come one day and appear as one of us. Did Jesus preexist? Well, John seventeen five says, And now, O Father, glorify 
thou me with thine own self, which is the glory which I had with thee before the world was, which I had, which I had. That's past tense, brothers and sisters. Not only did Jesus said that, but before the world was, what? Jesus is clearly claiming that he was there before the world was. That sounds like preexistence to me. What do you think, brothers and sisters? Check this out. Go to John chapter 8, verse 56 to 59. It says, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Verse 57, Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet 50 years old, and how thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Then took up stones to cast at him. Notice that Christ said before. For Abraham, meaning existed. That sounds like pre-existence, brothers and sisters. Not only that, but he said, I am. Not I was. Not I will be. Not, but I am. That means pre-existence, Christ lived in a place that was timeless, ever-present, from everlasting to everlasting. He told the Jews exactly what he, God the Son, said to Moses in Exodus chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. What it says there is, and Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come to the children of Israel and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you, and they shall say unto me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? Verse 14, And God said unto them, I am that I am. And he said, Thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. So what have we proven thus far? One, that the term one, spiritually speaking, can only be understood with a spiritual mindset, not an earthly mindset. That two, that's two different worlds. That's like trying to take basketball rules and apply it to baseball. It's not, going to, it's not going to work, brothers and sisters. Different worlds with two different laws. Therefore, we have to honor them. Two, God is called the mighty God by the Old Testament prophets. Why would anyone be led to believe that one of the prophets who was heavily against idolatry would make an idolatrous statement in God's holy word to state that the mighty God is going to be born into the world? Hmm? It wasn't idolatry. It, it wasn't idolatrous, brothers and sisters, because it came to pass. And finally, Jesus clearly preexisted. He had glory with the Father before the world was created. He had made the world. Huh? John the Baptist even knew that he was before him. You can read that in John chapter 1. It says here, John chapter 10, um, you can read John chapter 1, verse 1. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Everybody knows that already. Let's drop down to verse 10. He, who was he? was in the world. Who was in the world? And the world was made by him. Whoever he was, he made this world. And this world knew him not. That sounds like free existence to me. What do you all think, brothers and sisters? Verse 14 says, chapter and verse 1, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now listen to what John the Baptist stated here. Verse 15, John bare witness of him, and he cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. <laughs> what? Elizabeth gave birth before Mary did. You can read that in Luke chapter 1 and chapter 2. So what is John the Baptist talking about? He's trying to say, brothers and sisters, that Jesus is God. Jesus preexisted. Verse 18 says, no man has seen God, meaning this is the Father he's talking about here at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. We have many cases in Scripture where people spoke to God face to face, from Abraham to Jacob to Moses to Joshua, etc. So how do we reconcile that? Easy. They didn't see God the Father. They saw God the Son. There's a lot more that I can cite, but time is going against me at the moment. I will make sure that I will 
recite much more in my rebuttal time. I hope you are all enjoying this powerful debate. See you all in my rebuttal. God bless. All right, once again, you're now listening to Season 4 of the Bay Talk for You. The number is 646-716-7320. That's 646-716-7320. The title of this debate, Is Jesus God Revisited? Is Jesus God Revisited? All right, hopefully you guys are taking down your notes. As I always say, whatever you hear on Debate Talk for you, make sure you take down the information and do your own independent research. But you got to definitely write down the information. All right, so I'm going to bring in my next special guest right now that's going to, you know, go on with his opening statement right now. It's going to be 15 minutes each. Let me open up his phone line and we do a radio check. All right, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, so you got 15 minutes and you can go ahead. Thanks for everybody for tuning in. I'm going to get straight to it. That was a great presentation by Brother Stanley. I start off like I always start off saying, it doesn't matter what we believe. The only thing that matters is what is the truth. We don't need no theological gymnastics or no theological garbage to answer such a simple question. We shouldn't have to break down certain words and try to explain meanings of the Hebrew word, a card, or whatever, to answer a simple question. Pay attention to this whole debate, how my opposition will try to redefine what we mean by God. Everyone listening to this debate should already know what we are talking about, a, and we're talking about a person. When I'm talking about G-O-D, God, I'm talking about the God that Jesus referred to and in, in how he meant it, the way he said it. Any other way we try to discuss the meaning of God when the question is proposed, is Jesus God, is ridiculous and strategically way of avoiding the simple question, is Jesus God? The moment that Mr. Stanley agrees that there is someone other than Jesus, meaning a separate person that is God, the debate should be over. The purpose of this debate is to make it clear that if the claim is true that there is only one person who is God because there is only one God, then by default, Jesus cannot be that person. Mr. Stanley will agree with me that the Father is God and that Jesus and the Father are separate persons. I'm going to say it again. He will agree with me that the Father is God and that Jesus and the Father are separate persons. With that in mind, understand the question, is Jesus God? If he agrees that they are two separate persons, referring to the Father, and, Father God and Jesus, at any time during this debate, please use common sense and agree that Jesus can, can't be God if the Father is a separate person than Jesus. Use common sense. The words used in the spirituality and, 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 and the human thought and all this other, listen, stick with simplicity like the Bible says. Simplicity referring to God. God is a person or a being who we're referring to. Now listen closely. When Jesus referred to God, now we're talking about when Jesus referred to God in the scriptures, we know exactly what he means and who he is talking about. So why should we... So why should we not be saying God is the same person that Jesus is referring to as God? We must agree that the Bible says that the Father is God. Keep asking yourself the question, Jesus is Jesus God. Now let's look in the scriptures. God is the Father. That's where my stand is at. Again, he will not deny this. 1 Corinthians 8, 6 says, but to us there is but one God the Father. God obviously is the Father. John chapter 6, verse 27, Jesus was referring to how God the Father has sealed him. Notice that it says God, the same letters that is used in the title, is Jesus God. Jesus said God the Father has sealed him. In, in, sec, in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3, notice Paul writes, he says, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Notice he says, God the Father of our, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Notice again, I'm going to keep repeating it. He says that God is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 31. 2 Corinthians 11, 31 says, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Is anybody listening to what the Bible is saying? That God, that Jesus has a God. Jesus has a God. The debate is, is Jesus God? This is common sense. Galatians chapter 1, verse 3. Galatians chapter 1, verse 3. Grace be to you in peace from God the Father. Notice that the Bible is saying that God is the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Notice clearly that the Bible is saying that God, is, the Father, is God. Go to second, um, or Ephesians 1, 3. We said that. Second John, verse 3. This is a big one. Second John, verse 3. Grace be with you, mercy and peace. Notice it says, from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Watch this. The Son of the Father. Now, common sense, spirituality, whatever you want to call it, the Bible itself says that God is the Father, 
and that he's the father, God and father of Jesus. And then it clearly says in John, uh, 2 John verse 3 that Jesus is the son of the father. In other words, he's the son of God, which Brother Stanley won't deny this. Romans chapter 1 verse 7 says, Grace and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Who is God? The Father. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 3. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Is, is the whole world listening to what the Bible says? I didn't write this. It says God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You don't need to have spirituality to know that that is saying that God, that Jesus has a God. So Jesus has a God. So Jesus has a God. I'm going to keep repeating that the whole show. The Bible, the Bible never uses the phrase God the Son, but it does say God the Father. Now, Jesus' own words, don't listen to me and Brother Stanley. Let's just see what Jesus said. We don't have to go all these other uh, so-called books and epistles that all kind of people wrote, that uh, supposedly wrote. Let's look what Jesus said, Jesus' words. John chapter 17, verse 3. And this is life eternal, that they may know thee, watch this, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Jesus Christ is speaking to God, the Father. Now, unless you want to go away from the monotheistic uh, thought, you're going to eventually, if you agree with Brother Stanley, have to say that there are two fathers. Do you want to say that? Christians, do you really want to say that? You know that wouldn't be right. Let's get back to Jesus' words. Jesus was speaking to the Father and actually said to the Father that he is the only true God. The question of the debate is, is Jesus God? Now, if Jesus told the Father that he is the only true God, not that the Father needed him to tell him that, but he said that. If he said that, do you not believe Jesus, Brother Stanley, or any of those who are on that side? Do you not believe Jesus' words? Well, let's go on further. John chapter 20, verse 17. Go, go, he said, Jesus, once again says, go unto my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father, that's Jesus speaking, and your father, referring to the disciples. Then he goes, and to my God, and your God. Notice that Jesus says himself, I didn't say it, Brother Stanley didn't say it, but Jesus said that he actually has a God. Unless you want to go uh, crazy and say that Jesus is the God of himself, I mean, I don't think Brother Stanley would say that because he's a very intelligent man, and I know, and I know him. He's, he's, he's not going to go that far with him. If you look at Revelation chapter 3, verse 12, he actually, Jesus is supposedly speaking in Revelation and says, my God, my God. He says it four times. He, he's, talking, he's referring to that, G, that he has a God. This is after he supposedly resurrected. Now, now, in Matthew chapter 27, we know Jesus cries out to somebody. He cries out and says, my God, my God. Now, I want to know, or I am stating that if he says, my God, my God, he says this. Notice if he says, my God, Jesus has a God. If Jesus is also God, then that would make two gods. If, if, if people, and I, and I know that people will go to a scripture that refers to where God said that Jesus is his God. That's the, that makes two gods. Now you understand that there's going to be contradictions and errors and all that. But let's just stick with to the point, to the simplicity of this. The question is, is Jesus God? Now, Jesus is the Son of God. Do you believe that? I know Brother Stanley believed that, and Christians believe that. According to Acts chapter 8, verse 37, Philip the Synod said that it, uh, he's, he, had to, he quoted or said that he believed Jesus was the Son of God. Matthew 16, 16, Jesus said, Who do men say that I am? Who do men say that I am? We know what happened. He said, Thou art the Christ, the Son. Listen, the Son of the living God. And then he said, Flesh and blood hasn't revealed this to you. So he claimed and he knows and he accepted and he received the fact that he is the Son of God. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 10 through 11, let me turn there. 1 John chapter 5, verse 10 through 11. Listen, everybody. The scripture says, He that believeth on the Son of God has this witness in himself. So be careful when you listen to this. He that believeth not God has made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. Do you believe the record that God gave of his Son isn't the Son Jesus? Notice when we're using the word God in that sentence, we're not referring to Jesus. We're referring to someone else. In verse 11, and this is the record that God has given to us eternal life, and this is the life is in his Son. When we're using the word God in those verses, we are referring to a person. And it's not referring to Jesus in there. So that means someone else is God other than Jesus, unless you're going to say there's two gods. The sad thing about this whole debate is people will not be honest with themselves. An example, 
when we or, or any of those who are listening say Jesus was talking to God or praying to God when we all know, we all know what he means when he's praying and talking to someone else. If Jesus is talking to God, that means Jesus is not God. He's talking to God. Now take the title of this debate. Is Jesus God? This is how simple this is. Is Jesus God? We don't have to ask, um, is he a group of one? Is he a trinity of one, two of one? When we see the word God in there or when Jesus says that God, God said this or God said that, isn't Jesus referring to someone other than himself? Those will be the, some of the questions that I will ask the brother. Clearly, everybody, I used to be a oneness teacher. I admit that. I used to teach this. one. That, 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 but I used to teach Jesus was God, and that's it, period, point blank. And it came down to the fact that when we had to ask the question, when Jesus, who is he talking to, oneness people cannot say that he's talking to himself, and they already know that. Now, the Trinity brings three people into it. I never believed in the Trinity, but there is a separation of three of them who they try to say is one. I guess Brother Stanley's taking only the two. There's two and one is what he's talking about. The problem that we have here, the problem that we're going to have here is when Jesus made the statement to his own father, who he said was God, Jesus himself said was God, when he says you are the only true God. I don't like to break down just one word, but I believe only means singularity. I believe only means that it's just only that person. Now, I believe that it means it's no one else or nothing besides them. It's solely exclusive. So if Jesus himself, forget all the other scriptures that we say, we take this verse that Jesus says that his father is the only true God. That is a simple answer to this debate question when we say is jesus god we i would say ask jesus and what would jesus say jesus would say my father is the only true god that's what jesus would say the debate's over i have nothing else to say all right once again you're listening to debate talk for you radio season four of debate talk for you i know you guys enjoying this particular debate the title of this debate but others just joined in is jesus god revisited is Jesus God revisited? My special guest is Stanley Sylvain and Brother Minister. The number is 646-716-7320. That's 646-716-7320. I see some people pressing at number one. You know, they're securing a spot. So when the public Q&A gets here, they're going to definitely um, gonna go in order and take your questions. So once again, if you know you're going to have a question, guarantee you can call in 646-716-7320 and make sure you press the number one. And don't press it again. Press it one time. If you press it again, it's going to bring you back on the bottom of the list. So, you know, I see people already calling in and pressing the number one. I appreciate you guys. So once we get to the public Q&A, guys, we're going to get to your questions. But right about now, this is the rebuttal part of this debate. That's going to be 10 minutes each. Then we open up Stanley's phone line. And, Stanley, you can go ahead. Oh, that was a powerful opening as well. Um, thank you, Brother Minister, for your powerful opening. And I pray that um, God will use me in this, in this rebuttal here to address a lot of the points that he mentioned here. Okay. I hope you notice that individuals, or doctrinal beliefs that reject the divinity of Christ generally or usually or even only hold on to the scriptures that refers to him as a human being. Pay attention to that as a human being. So if you look at the limitations of the human nature and then you try to classify whether or not he's fit to be God in that, in that particular moment, of course you're going to say no. It's obvious, but wait a minute, though. Does the scripture say that he's God? Uh, yeah. Um, let's take a look at that. Let's look at John chapter 1. We actually read that one already, but it's pretty clear. I'm, gonna go, I'm not going to go everywhere. I'm just going to just stick with this. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So whoever that word was, it was God. Simple as that. That's God. Whoever that word was, is God. Let's, let's, talk, let's talk more about that word. Drop down to verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. Whose glory? The word's glory, right? That's what we were just talking about. The word's glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Didn't you just hear Brother Minister say that, that Jesus is the son of the Father? He's the son of God and God is the Father? Well, over here it says um, the word in verse 14, is the only begotten of the Father. Uh, that means the word, according to verse 1, 
was God. Huh? Well, then the Bible says it. Does the Bible say it? That's, that's the question. Does the Bible say, yes, did Jesus say that he's the son of God? Yes, I agree with that. Did Jesus say that the Father is greater than I? Yes, I agree with that. But however, did the scripture say Jesus is God? Yes, it agrees with that too. So, you know, you find scripture saying that he's God. You find Jesus saying that he's the son of God. And you think contradiction? Nope. Son of God is still God the son. It doesn't take away from the from the other. But I could explain it further. But let's just see how many more scriptures says that Jesus is God. If you look at Acts chapter 20, verse 28, it says, Take heed unto yourselves to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed to the church of who? God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Whoa! God purchased something with his own blood? Uh, I thought God doesn't die. Well, we got a situation here. What about John chapter 20, verse 28? Thomas, he must have been completing, um, committing utter idolatry and blasphemy, and Jesus didn't even rebuke him for it. I mean, you see representatives of God like Peter and even angels says, hey, look, I'm not God. Worship God. Only do that to God. However, he didn't do that to Thomas. He didn't do that to Thomas. He said, Thomas said, answered him and said, my Lord. Who was he talking to when he said, my Lord? Uh, I thought Jesus is Lord. I thought, well, I, thought you, I thought Brother Minister said, Paul said that Jesus is Lord. Is Lord. Okay. Uh, okay. So then he said, my Lord and my God. Uh, well, he called them two things now. So, I mean, how could we escape these scriptures? It says it. Clearly, we cannot avoid the clear text. So, what was the purpose of the idea of you have to focus on the, the flesh to, to disprove the, the, the divinity? Let me tell you about the problem with that. Imagine a billionaire in a debate about not being able to survive on minimum wages for a year. Something offer. But the rules are you cannot borrow money from rich friends. You cannot touch your bank account. You cannot even use your credit card. You have to keep it in a secret. You've got to keep it in a secret. You have to do it in the same manner as a person that does this normally. No cheating or the deal is off. Would he still be a billionaire? Yes. He's only playing a role for a year. Yes, he is. And would he still be rich? Yes. But for that moment, he has to prove something, so he's not going to use his riches. That's like blindfolding me for a moment and say that I'm lying. I'm acting blind for a time, but I'm not blind. If we were to take only the information of his temporary deal, you would get that he's poor, trying to keep his head above water, can't, um, couldn't afford to lend money to people, etc. Could that be a rich person's life? No, you'd say. You, if you don't know the whole story, of course you'll say no. Jesus had a divine plan before the earth was created. He was the planned savior of the world. But in order for him to do this, he had to become man and to follow the rules of sinful man. However, he has to keep it in a secret. He has to keep it in the down low. Don't use your miracles for yourself. If you're hungry, don't create food with your powers. Since man can't do this on their own, you have to feel the pain that man feels. You cannot know everything like you know that you knew when you were on, on, on the throne with your glory because you have to be totally dependent of God the Father, so you can be an example on how to live the life on this planet. If you break these rules, then you haven't proven that man cannot overcome sin and make it, make it in this life without being solely dependent on the power of the Holy Spirit. So you will have to find that Christ had to keep a low profile. So you're not going to find scripture saying, oh, I am God Almighty. You're not going to find that. He's keeping a low profile. Just like you want to find a billionaire saying, I'm a billionaire. Of course. Come on, brothers and sisters. We have to take these things in context. Context is very important into understanding scriptures, or you're going to end up with a lot of misuse. For instance, with this kind of exegesis, you can come with all kinds of conclusions. You can even make Jesus Christ to be a mere idea and not a real person that existed in history. All you have to do is only point to scriptures that describe him to be bread, 
a light, a door, a lamb, a serpent, a lion, and a holy thing. And avoid all the other scriptures that tells you that he was a person. And then all you got to do is just point to those kinds of scriptures only, avoid the other scriptures, and say, hey, he was never a person. Because what would a person be called a lion? What would a person be called a serpent? What would a person be called um, a lamb? What would a person be called bread? Or a person... And it ignores all the other scriptures that says he was a person, he was a person, he was a person, he was a person. That's exactly what my brother's doing here. He's only focusing on the scriptures that was only declaring that he was man, but ignoring all the other scriptures that tell you he's God. He's God. He's God. He's God. Oh, God. He takes well, He accepts worship. He receives worship. Can, can you receive worship if you are a man? And be okay with it? No. And be righteous? No. But Jesus did. Ah. So what does that make him? He told Satan, you should only worship God. Then why did he receive worship? Simple as that. Because he's God, brothers and sisters. That's exactly what that means. And if you understand spiritual language, like I said, if you understand spiritual language, then this will make sense to you. But you see, the reason why we have to explain these theolo- theological situations is because you come up with stuff like that. Um, not consistent. You, know, you, you can't use all the scriptures. You, have no, you, you can only use some. So when you come to these situations like that, um, at least with my position, I can use all the scriptures, and I'll be consistent, and I'll be in, harm- in harmony. But if you just look at it from an earthly, man- from an earthly mindset, it'll be contradicting. It, a lot of things won't make sense. And that's exactly what we have here, brothers and sisters. We're having an earthly mindset trying to understand a spiritual mindset. He said to use your common sense. But if it's common earthly sense, you guess what? It ain't going to work in this realm. That's like trying to breathe underwater and trying to be a fish. You can't do that with breathing air if you're an air-breathing individual. You've got to have gills to be under there. So you have to make sure you use the proper context and the proper tools to understand spiritual things. God bless you all. I hope you understand this. All right, that's a good one, Stanley. Okay, look, so we're going to come at this. Um, and with the rebuttal, when he first started off, he was saying how God is seen in many different views. I think that's a problem with all people, period. He shouldn't be have to be seen in many different views, and I'm not sure that God would want to be seen in many different views. He was saying that it was about one, meaning monothe- that's monotheistic. He said he's that, and so am I. Okay, so if you're monotheistic and one is one, he went to the analogy of Adam and Eve, and he's saying what he was trying to say is, he actually, first let me say what he said. He said one God to him means he's saying one group of persons. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Stanley, on that, but I thought that's what you said. He says that when he sees God, he's saying one group of persons. He used the analogy in Genesis 2.24 using Adam and Eve saying, um, he became, they become one flesh. He's saying there's two different people who became one flesh, and he's focusing on one. The debate's not about one, but we'll go there. Notice that even in your analogy, you actually go back to the point to try to prove one is singular. You, when you try to say that Adam and Eve is two, but one, you make the emphasis on the one, meaning that it becomes one flesh. One flesh meaning singular one. So that would be one. So one is one. If we have to get in a debate about the spirituality of the word one, just one. If one is one, and everybody knows that, and that's where all this uh, theological gymnastics comes, and that's where these debates come from. One is actually one. We don't have to go into those spirituality for one is one. It's also in that in that thought process. Adam and Eve, two different people, you say become one. But Adam is not Eve, and Eve is not Adam, period. They're not the, – the guy ain't the girl, and the girl ain't the guy in that situation. So I just wanted to make that clear. You talked a lot about the preexistence, whether he preexisted or not. Let's, say, let's just go there and say he did preexist. I'm sure Brother Stan is going to say that Jesus Christ did not exist as God the Father in preexistence. In other words, two separate beings. So my question is, which one is God? Or unless you're going to say there was two gods in preexistence. They're two, they're two separate people. Even if you say they're working as one unity, there's two separate people. The debate is, is Jesus God? When we say God, we're talking about, is he God, the supreme being, the most high God? Um, you, alluded, you alluded to, um, 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 you alluded to uh, the Old Testament, about the Old Testament God, and, and I like how you did that, because I used to use that when I, was trying, when I used to try to prove Jesus God, and you kept focusing on that mighty God, mighty God, and you were saying that. Here's the problem that... Christianity is going to deal with and if they're going to really uh, uh, defend their faith. Okay, I'm assuming for now that you're saying Jesus 
is the God of the Old Testament. I'm assuming that you're saying that, and you can come back and, re- and, and clarify that. Now, so you was assuming or saying that um, the mighty God of Abraham, so in other words, you're saying he's the God of Abraham. If you're saying Jesus is the God of the Old Testament, that would be contradictive and contrary to the New Testament scriptures. And in my questions, I'm going to ask you that, but I might as well just deal with it now in the rebuttal. Is Jesus the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Because if you go to Acts chapter 3, verse 13, and i got time, I'm going to turn there. Acts chapter 3. Verse 13, the Bible, not me, the Bible says, The God of Abraham and the and of Isaac and of Jacob and the God of our fathers has glorified his son Jesus. Notice that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the one who fathered the son. Two different people. But the, but the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the God of the Old Testament, but you want to try to get scriptures to say that Jesus is that Old Testament God. But that would contradict Acts chapter 3, verse 13. It also contradicts Acts chapter 2, verse 22, 24, and 32. Acts chapter 2, verse tw- uh, 22, uh, 24, and 32. Let's look at this. It says, you men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, the, d- the debate is, is Jesus of Nazareth God? Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God. Now, wait a second here. Is he God or was he approved of God? No, notice that, verse 24, whom God has raised up. God, the same person we're talking about in the title of the debate, is Jesus God? God actually raised up Jesus. Unless you're saying God raised up himself. Are you seeing this? It's a simple question. Notice in verse 32. This, Acts chapter 2, verse 32 says, This Jesus has God raised up. God is a separate person in Jesus in all these verses. Notice it's using G-O-D, the same letters that are used in our title of our debate, meaning two different people. Now, God, this God of Abraham and Jacob is the Old Testament God. This same God is the one who raised up Jesus, the man from Nazareth. So, so Jesus cannot be the Old Testament God. Or, you're, or what you're going to find is contradictions. But it's the contradictions is coming from the doctrines of Christianity. Acts chapter 4, verse 10. Acts chapter 4, verse 10. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that's who the debate's about, Jesus, who is Jesus? Watch this. Whom you crucified, whom God raised up. I'm sure Brother Stead is not going to say when the word, the letters G-O-D is there and God's there, we're not going to say that refers to Jesus. We refer to someone else who actually raised up Jesus, who was actually the Old Testament God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, he said, uh, I am, he was, he was quoting scripture, I think, or something, or saying something about, I am has sent me to you. I am has sent me to you. Okay, we say that the Old Testament God is I am. Okay, I am has sent someone. Jesus Christ himself, multiple times, I believe it's John chapter 6, uh, you have to look him up, John chapter 6, I believe it's verse 27, and uh, all through the book of John, he actually says, Jesus himself says, that the Father sent him. So if the I am sent him, and the I am is God, and God is the Father, which you don't deny, God the Father has sent Jesus. So God has sent Jesus. The question of the debate is, is Jesus God? So did Jesus send Jesus? Is Jesus the Father? These are things you have to deal with. You went back and said, I'm only pointing the scriptures to his humanity. No, I pointed out the scriptures of Jesus talking. Jesus talking. Throw this book out and get in real time. Put yourself back in that time where they wasn't writing down what he was supposedly saying. And Jesus walks up and says, my father and your father, my God and your God. There is no theologicalness about you have to determine what he was talking about. He was talking about somebody else who was his father, God, which is in heaven. That's who he'd have been talking about. We wouldn't have had to break down words, Greek, Hebrew. We'd have took word for word if he really truly said that. When he said, we'd have heard him praying, say, Father, you are the only true God. If we'd have heard him, we wouldn't have had to break down nothing. We wouldn't have had to worry about his humanity. We'd have heard him talking to somebody else, and then Jesus would have told you with his own mouth that he was speaking to God. He would have said that. We could go to the John 1, 1, bring that up, and it says God was uh, uh, where God was, and God was, the Word was God. Notice it says the Word was God. And I love when people go there because they go to verse 14 because they have to. But when you go to verse 14, when you go to verse 14, and please don't come at me that I don't understand. I'm just looking at what it says. When it says in, in verse 14, and the Word was made flesh, the Word was made flesh. My question is, we know the Father is God, so did the Father become flesh, or did Jesus become flesh? Uh, uh, and dwelt among us, and was beheld his glory, no it's talking about the Word, and the glory of the only begotten of the Father. That same person that they said was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, became flesh, is also the Son of God. You already know, come on guys, 
I don't need to go there any longer. And then he goes to Acts chapter 20, verse 28, which I used to use all the time too, when the scripture actually said, because God purchased <coughs> the church with his blood. So I used to always use that too. It's in there. It says it. I don't deny that. But let's, let's get with all the other scriptures and let's also use our common sense. Jesus himself said that God is a spirit. I ask a question. Can God bleed? Can God truly bleed? Can God bleed? He uses the fact that Thomas mentioned my, my Lord and my God. Let's, let's back up and start with, with, the, with the context like you said, my brother. Jesus went to the woman and actually said, tell them that I, have to, I haven't sent it to my father and your father, my God and your God. Now, now, Jesus told them to go back and tell them that he has a God and that it's also their God. Now, if he, was he talking about someone else when he told in John 20, 17 to go back and talk about God? Was he talking about himself or was he talking about uh, uh, someone else or himself? I point to Jesus where he was talking. You said I kept talking about him being a man. I can't help the scriptures talk about his man. This ain't about whether I deny the deity or not. The scriptures said that he was a man. All I know is this. When Jesus Christ was walking this earth as a man, whatever, divinity, man, however you want to put it, he actually said he has a God. When I ask the question, if Jesus has another God, if Jesus has a God, that means when you look at the title, is Jesus God, if you say Jesus is God and he has another God, you now believe there's two gods. Who is God, my people? Jesus asked the question, who do men say that I am? Brother Stanley says that he's God, but the scriptures and Jesus have confirmed that he is the son of the living God. That's my rebuttal. So we're going to start off with Stanley asking questions to Brother Minister. Let me open up both brothers' phone lines. Let me set up the timer, and you can go ahead, guys. Go ahead, Stanley. Hey, Brother Minister. What's going hey, on, what's going up, bro? <laughs> hey, um, got a couple of questions for you. Mm-hmm. All right. Do you believe that the scriptures, just in general, the scriptures, the Bible, from Genesis, I mean, to Revelation, the Bible that you're holding your hand, do you believe that somewhere in there there's an implication that Jesus is God? Is there some implication? Yeah, according to those scriptures that you was bringing up. Oh, okay, so those scriptures doesn't imply that Jesus is God, correct? What's that? So you saying the scriptures that I brought up does give the implication that if an individual that was reading it, like you said, they use your common sense, they say, "Oh, you know what? Jesus is God." Could, they, could somebody come up? Could somebody make that error? Yeah, that's why I'm answering yes because of the when you say the word is God, the word was God. I can see why people could say, "Yeah, there's an implication." From that, ah. from, from that. Okay, can you explain then First John chapter three verse sixteen for me? John three sixteen. No, First on, John three sixteen. Oh, First John three sixteen. Yeah, yeah, read it for me, please. It says, "Hereby perceive we the love of God, mm-hmm. because He mm-hmm. laid down His life for mm-hmm. us, mm-hmm. and we mm-hmm. ought to lay down our lives for the brother." Now, who's the He? Who's the antecedent for the he that laid down his life in that sense? Well, in my, in my, in my King uh, James Version, my, um, where it says, uh, precede the love of God, it's in italicized, mm-hmm. meaning that that was implemented in there because that, that was the best interpretation that they can have. They wrote that. That's in, I guess, the King James Version. I don't know if you have that version, right? Yes, I'm it, looking it, at the King James too, but the one I have is not italicized in that area. But, okay, my, mine okay. is in there, and, and, and what I've always known and learned that when that's in there, that's put in there by the writer. Now, here's where I think they shouldn't have put that in there for the simple fact yeah. is because God laid down his life. Now, if God is the Father, the, 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 mm-hmm. I'm not asking this question, I'm saying the answer. The Father did not right. lay his life down. The Father's the not the father. one who put him yes, on the cross. I agree. Okay. I agree. But the Son did. You agree? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yep, the Son. Okay, Jesus and then, but, okay so then that's the idea, is that we, I'm saying that this is describing the Son that laid down his life, not right, the Father. Right. Right. But now, let, let, now let's now, now let's go to um we can go to um Philippians chapter two. And I want you to, Philipp- to help me with that one. Hey brother, you say Philippians two? two? Yes, I did. Okay. Go ahead. You I, can see read a step it. By, I see a step by step process here. Let's start from verse five. I see a step by step process here, and I want you to help me with this. Okay. It says here, "Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus." Okay. Uh huh. Now, verse six: Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Can you explain that verse for me, please? Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robber to be equal with God. In the form yeah. of God, could it be referring to uh, the nature, the divine nature that he may have, that you were speaking of, that he's divine? I'm asking you. I'm asking you. Oh. What does oh, the form uh, of God mean to you? A form of God, um, I'm saying, like, uh, when, when I would combine my belief in us or the thoughts from me reading before, they would be like, he, the only form that he has of him is like he's the express image of him. 
He, so okay, in being so in the, the form of God. Could an individual like that, could an individual that way that you're expressing, could be equal with the Father? Uh, only, only, only to the point of uh, his character. Um, uh, um, in, so you in, could be equal to the Father in character. Are you saying? You could be. He, he was as far as not like sinning in that category. You understand what I'm saying? And when he's uh, he he he's the expression of his God. He had no sin in him. Uh, 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 he had uh, the mind of God. He did the will of God. He 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 retook the will of God the Father, God the Father that gave it to him. You know what I'm saying? And he did his will. So in that form, he's likeness. Like we're in the. They say we're made in the image of God or in the likeness, but we are not okay, that look at person. Verse seven. Okay, look at mm-hmm. look at verse seven. It says, "But mm-hmm. he but made himself of no reputation and yep. took upon him the form of a servant." What does it mean uh, when it says he took upon him the form of a servant? What does that mean? To be to acting like a servant and being uh, submissive or uh, if no, you want no, to use the word. a form of the servant. Yeah, a form is a likeness. Form. Yeah, the form is likeness. It's not. It's not referring. Uh, uh, um, um, how can I say it? It's in the um, the form of him is 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 like I'm a form. Like I'm trying. I can't. I can't express explain that. No, and, I, I, um, I, I can see the confusion. Are, are you part, are you saying that they were in the same character as men? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay, look at this, look at the next line. It says here, and was made in the likeness of men. It already said uh-huh. that. There. Uh huh. So then, how was so? Then, so then, this is interesting. How was he made in the likeness of men if he was always a man? Because man has to submit. No, no. Listen to what I ask you. How I'm did he? No, 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 no. Listen to how I'm asking you. Uh-huh. I think you're missing the point. You're, you're missing the, the exact words I'm saying. I'm okay. saying, how could a man be in the likeness of a man? That would be redundant. The idea is you have to be something other than a man to become a man in the likeness of man. Would you agree with that? In one sense, I see. I could. I can agree with that. In one sense, but in the same sense, you could be in the form of a man as a, another man who's humbling himself and being submissive. Mm, not because, because if you think about it, this is telling you this. This right here, this scripture is, is Paul telling the individual that men should be like Christ because he humbled himself, not like a man. It'll be, it would be redundant if you say, "Hey, humble yourself like Stanley." That doesn't make any logical sense. You have, you have, you have to. So you the, have con- to be somebody so the other context. Than me. So the context they're saying is, is or I'll, let you, I'll let you ask the question. Go ahead. Okay. So the idea is that he was in the he was at one time in the glory of God, then he stepped down from glory, came into the likeness of human to be a human being, and then he okay. leveled himself even more by okay. by um, being obedient to death. He, not even even more than that, the death of the cross. The so what's your question today? Going down and low and low and low. So the question is, how low can you go? That's the question. So, 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 so the idea is, how could he explain um, that he was a form of a servant, a form of a man, but yet we have to be like him as a man? I, I'm trying to understand the logic. He has to be something other than man to be like a man. No, we have you to be the, like him in the way that he presented himself in his character. Well, if you look at the context here, it says in verse 6 that he was in a different form. He was in the form of God over here, but yet. Something changed. He became the a context, form of a servant. The context, the context is not the context of this of this chapter is not the context of whether Jesus is God. That's not the context. No, 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 no. It, it, it has to be because he's we're speaking about two different forms here. Six is the one form, form of God. Seven mm-hmm. is form of a servant. That's two different forms: form of God, form of a servant. All right, the answer, to your, the answer to your question was then I I take the context to be about having the mind of Christ. The con- this context is about yes, telling us that we should have the course. mind of Christ. Yes, the mind of Christ is to be humble. But he's describing what he means by humility after the fact. He's explaining mm-hmm. here, here's a form, that's what Jesus was this form here, where he was equal with God, and here's another form when he got lower than God. Mm-hmm. I could even show you a scripture where he said he was made lower than the angel. Mm-hmm. You know that scripture, don't you? Yeah, I know that. So that's in, that's in um, I think it's in, is it Hebrews? I believe it's in Hebrews. But the idea is, if he, made, if he was made lower than the angel, the scripture says, that is man. If you read in Psalm chapter 8, that's man. Man was made lower than the angel. So then if he became, you can see the context for, for what this he was, it's, it's so in harmony with that because it's telling you at one time he was up there, now he's down here in lower than the angels. Mm-hmm. So now, and then, and then verse 8 really cleanses it. It says, and he was found in a fashion as a man. So why would you say that he was fashioned as a man if he was always a man? 
Is that a question? I said, how could he be found in a fashion as a man if he was always a man? That is, okay, so, okay, so but the debate's not about what is a man, so let's just take the preexistence. I'm going to answer your question no, real quick. I'm going to no, answer no. it. The, okay, the, the idea is this. The idea is this. The reason why I, this is clear in the debate is because if we could establish that he was something other than man, then we could understand clearly what verse 6 is saying. So let me it's answer saying here that he is equal with God. Okay, break it down. Because if he preexisted, say he, he, he preexisted not with a human body, he would preexist. If he preexisted, he would preexist as a spirit, like his father's a spirit. E, yes. Even if he preexisted as something else, he was not the father. The father is God. That's the simple okay, that still rules. Your, that still that would, that would still throw out all your arguments that use his manhood to to, to, to try to, dis, to, um, to disprove that he was God. And that would throw all that scripture out because you're just proving that he was around before the flesh. So you cannot say can a man can a man bleed because he wasn't always man. That's what you believe in to. Do you see that point? Yeah, I see your point. So that's what I'm saying. All right, you can go to your you can go to your book, um cross examination. All right, now it's time for my questions. You cleverly I like I like how you cleverly asked the questions and then gave the explanations. I I didn't really get the let's focus on is Jesus God is the question. So here's 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 my questions. They're gonna be yes or no questions. Anyone that any of them that you feel like you have to explain, I ask that you use it for your rebuttal so I can get my questions out. Number one, is there is there only one true God according to Jesus? Yes. There is okay. only, one, there's there's only one true God according to Jesus, right? Yes. According to Jesus. Does Jesus yes, have a God? Yes. When he made that Jesus statement, does have a God. Yes. Okay. Again, Who does Jesus again? refer to as God? I'm sorry. What, what's, the first, what's the question you asked before that? Who d- d- does Jesus have a God? When he was a, when he was man, yes. Okay. Um, uh, who does Jesus refer to as God? When he when he was man, his father. I, I don't I don't know. The debate is is Jesus God? When Jesus was here, he was a man. So I I don't know. I'm not. Yeah, I, yeah, I see you, how you're you, turning you, you, it you, into you, that. You already said. You already said that you already gave but me the, that he he was around before I, man. I'm just going to keep asking questions because I know how it's turning to the thing. I, the question is the question wasn't is Jesus man and God or God. The question is is Jesus God? So I, when I refer to Jesus, answer to, however you refer to Jesus. Does Jesus have a God? Um, no, I have, I have to make it clear for the audience. I have to say as a man. Oh, my God. You're, just, 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 I have to do that. I have to because I don't want people to be confused. The you can do that, that in the rebuttal, man. This ain't fair, this ain't fair Sal, because I didn't even get the answer to the questions because he, he did an explanation. Let me just ask the question. All right, all right, could, all right. All right. I, but I'm going to give you the answer, but I have to give a little bit more context. But go ahead. Okay, yeah, he's also allowed to explain, and uh, you know what is okay. whatever you want to explain. Yeah, we we, we are okay. we are allowed to explain. Okay, I'll ask in a different form. You, you, you were speaking. You were speaking. You didn't speak. I'll ask in a different form. No I, I, you, you, you were speaking. Can we stop the time so I can ask the question? Go ahead. Here's the. I'm sorry. The, when Jesus said that he had, that he told the uh, disciple to go back to John 20:17 and tell them that about that he has to see he hasn't went to his father and his God. That, mm-hmm. Do you take that to mean that Jesus has a God? Yes, he was, he was a man. Yes. Okay, who, when he does refer to God, who is he referring to? When he was a man, he was referring to his father. Okay, is Jesus' God your God? Yes, the, the God of Jesus is the same God as, 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 that I serve, yes. Okay, when we ask the question in the title of this debate, is Jesus God, are we talking about the person that Jesus calls God? No. Okay, that, that's who I was, but I'm going to go on. Do you believe that the Father is God? I believe, of course, the Father is God, yes. Okay. I, I, I is Jesus and the Father separate persons? Yes, they are separate individuals, yes. Okay. So would you agree that Jesus is not God the Father? I agree 100%. Okay. When Jesus said the Father is greater than I, who was he referring to that was greater than him? He was referring to his Father while he was man on earth. Okay. Uh, so the Father is greater than Jesus, right? The Father is greater than Jesus when he was man on earth, yes. Okay, I know that you say that God is the Father, that, that God the Father is your God. So is Jesus your God, even though you agree he is not God the Father? Jesus is my God, and the Father is my God, because the two made the one God of the Old Testament, yes. Okay, so Jesus Jesus is your God, and God the Father is your God, right? Yes. Just to clarify, okay. Is anyone greater than your God, Jesus? Is anyone greater than my, well, when, after Christ came as human, then and he gave us his, his high position. Then, then the father became greater, yes. Uh, the father became greater? Yes, because at one time they were equal, according to Philippians chapter 2, we just read in verse 6. Okay. Uh, do, you agree that Jesus, do you agree that Jesus is the only begotten son? Yes, 
Yes, he's the only begotten Son of God, yes. And when we say only, meaning he's the only one that could be, the single, solitary, when it says only? When I say only, yes, I mean only. The, the only one that was ever born from a woman from God, yes. Okay, so like John 3.16, when it said uh, God uh, God beget, um, only get, gave his only begotten son. That, that was an example I was trying to use in the only, that's right? That's the Father, that's the Father, yes. The Father gave his only son, Jesus Christ, yes, in that case. So that yes. only is singular. So in John 17.3, when he says, Jesus says that the Father is the only true God, is only mm-hmm. still singular there? Yes, only still singular there, yes. But however, okay. it's in context of comparing with him and other gods that were in the world. So he was the father at that time was the only true God. So Christ had to pray as a man to let him know that the father at that time was the only true God in comparison to Baal and Astros and any other God that was around. Okay. So when Jesus took, took away, after he resurrected and went back, and he's no longer a human, he became back to his status of God, is what you're saying? I disagree. With, I disagree. I think he's still a human, too, even now. Oh, even now? He's a glorified, he has a glorified body now, yes. Ooh, okay. Because um, he came back, he came back with flesh and blood. You can, you can read that in Luke. Okay, okay. Do you agree that uh, Jesus is the son of the living God? I, I said yes to that already. Yes, already. Okay, yeah, I know. It's just repetitive. So does that mean that Jesus is the son of someone else? Yes, when he came on earth as a man, that he became the son of God, yes. So he's a, he's a son of someone else. Who is that someone else? I mean, you already answered it, but... Yes, uh, Mary, the mother, and uh-huh. God, the Father. Yes. Okay. Uh, do you agree that Jesus Jesus is the Son of the Most High God? I, I just answered it just now. I, but I need you to. I just need these are the, 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 <laughs> you four reasons. Repeat it again. <laughs> is like Jesus? Because because I have to say it this way. So do you agree that Jesus is the Son of the Most High God? Yes, he is. Is Jesus the Most High God? Yes, he is as well. Yes, they both are the oh. Most High God. So is there two Most High Gods? No, they both are the Most High God, plural and singular. Okay. Um, in the following verses that I use, like John three sixteen or let's or Acts ten thirty eight. I know I don't get that much time. Acts ten thirty eight. I'm gonna read it. It says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. When uh-huh. we when that verse is in there, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. When that word mm-hmm. God is in there, G O D, is it referring to Jesus? No, the Father. The Father okay. anointed Jesus Christ, the man. Yes. Okay. Um, in 1 Timothy 2, 5, it mentions God and the man Jesus Christ. Yes. When it says the word God in there, is that referring to Jesus? Yes, the concept said that Jesus was man in that. Too. So definitely God there means that father there. Okay. So, 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 so far the scriptures I brought up, when it's saying God, it's just referring to the father, not Jesus. When, yeah, the only when one Jesus, that you brought up, yes. The ones you brought up, yes. When, when Jesus is praying, who is he praying to? When he was as man and he was praying, then he was praying to the father, yes. So... So, so Jesus wasn't praying to himself. He definitely was praying to Father God. Would you agree? Most definitely. I'm not a modalist. I'm not a modalist. No, okay. I don't believe that. In Mark 111, when you heard where it says they heard the voice that says, "Thou art my beloved Son," who was that uh-huh. speaking? That was the Father speaking there. Okay. Well, is the Father God? Of course. I answered that question already. I, I know I, the I, reason I, why. Yes. I'm, just, I'm, I'm just saying it. Uh-huh. So, <laughs> <laughs> did Jesus did Jesus say that his Father is the only true God? You said yes to that already. Yes, compared to the other gods. Okay, when Jesus says that he has a God, is he referring to himself or another person? When he was man, he said he had a God, he was still referring to the Father. Okay, did God have a son? Did God have a son? God the Father had a son, not God the Son. Okay, did, did, did the Father, can the Father God be the Son God? God the Son? Can the Father God be the Son God? Be, be God the Son. Can, the fa- can, the, can God the Father be God the Son? Yeah. No, they're separate individuals. They're separate individuals. So it's yes. two, two. Okay, so it's two separate individuals. There's you say God the Son, and then you say yes. there's God the Father. Two yes. separate individuals. Yes. You agree with that, right? Yes. Both being God. Yes. Okay. The one God. Uh, okay. Is God begotten? Is God? Sorry. God the Son is begotten, not God the Father. Okay. I know. Okay, I'll just say that for my um, closing. Okay, is the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob Jesus Christ? Yes, he is. Okay. Um, when you turn to Acts chapter 2, verse 22, 24, uh-huh. and 32, uh-huh. I, I, I uh-huh. only got them scriptures from before, it said that the mm-hmm. God of Abraham was the one who raised up Jesus. Do you deny that? Hold on. Hold on. Wait, wait a minute. Where am I at? It's Acts one? chapter 2, verse 22, and verse uh-huh. 24, and verse 32. Uh-huh. Also, uh-huh. Acts chapter 3. 
Uh, mm-hmm. Verse 13, you can focus on that one. Acts 3, 13 says, The God of Abraham and the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his son Jesus. Mm, that's a good scripture to focus on. I never really yeah, studied that one before. But well, I, 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 more, I, I, I used them in the, in the beginning. I was, I was hoping you used them for the rebuttal, but I was, I'll just yeah, yeah. give you more I, I, when we but talk that, later. That's a good scripture. That's a good scripture to point out to. But, yeah, I oh. like that one. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to meditate on that one for now. Okay, okay. Um, mm-hmm. uh, does the scripture say that we must believe Jesus is the Son of God or that we must believe he is God? The scriptures teach both. Uh, it, can you give me a one location where it says that we must believe Jesus is God? Oh, you mean, oh, you want a direct statement that says teach people that yeah. Jesus is God? No, we yeah. have no direct statement like that. But if the scriptures, if, if the Bible is telling us to teach the scriptures, and the scriptures uh-huh. are saying that Jesus is God, then we're supposed to be teaching that. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, is it possible? This is just. I know this is the last question. Is this possible that the writers of the New Testament? And those who finally put this book together took things from the Old Testament to try to apply them to Jesus in the New Testament to confirm the tradition of Christianity that Jesus is God. Um, I'm not sure. Is it I possible? Really see for what. I, I can't really say. Okay. That, that's it. All right, so we're going to start off with Stanley Sylvain. He has seven minutes for his rebuttal. Let me open up his phone line, and you can go ahead, Stanley. All right, this, this this debate is hot. I love it. It's going to, it's going well. I praise I praise God for this. Anyway, I'm just going to use my little time that I have just to just continue to prove that Jesus is God of the Old Testament. Uh, I'm going to have to admit that that Acts chapter three one. I have to study that one more because that, that's a good one there, brother. I like to see. I always give you that. But anyway, but here you go. We can't we still we still can't override majority of scripture because of one little one. You know what I'm saying? It just, we just have to try to find a way to harmonize it with the rest of the pile. That's all we got to do with that. So check this out. Psalms chapter um, 102, verses 21 to 27. This is powerful here. Brothers and sisters, please write these texts down. Get it down locked in your mind. This is going to twist you. Oh, Jesus is God, brothers and sisters. Watch this. All right, it says here, to declare the name of the Lord. That word, the Lord, there is Yahweh, God of the Old Testament, in Zion. And his praise in Jerusalem, when the people gathered together and the kingdoms are to serve Yahweh, the Lord, he weakened my strength in the way. He shortened my days and said, oh, my God, take me not away in the midst of my days. Thy years throughout all generations. Of old hast thou laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thine hand. They shall perish, but thou shalt endure. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment, as a vesture that shalt thou change them, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall have no end. You will look at this scripture right here, and there's no argument. I'm sure Brother Minister and many others, even those that don't believe Jesus is God, would have to admit, this is talking about God, straight up. This is my God. Okay, let's see how the Hebrews, the person, whoever wrote Hebrews, most people say it's Paul, but whoever wrote it, they quoted this scripture too. But who did that individual say it was? Ah, that's very important. Check this out. Hebrews chapter 1. Eight, and we're going to go to verse 12. So verse 8 to verse 12. It says here, But unto the Son, he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness to the scepter of the... You know what? Before I even continue, man, that right there, that right there kills it. Kills it. A father called him God. So the same, the same question I would have to ask the brother minister. Are we calling the father, which you recognize as God as a liar? He called his son God. So then that ends the deal. If the father said, he's God, then that's it. He's God. It's ended. Check this out, though. That's the debate. The debate is Jesus God. The father said, he's God. Well, then that answers the question. But that's not the point I want to focus on. Look at verse 9. Thou hast loved righteousness, and so much Jesus still, hate and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, has anointed thee, with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Okay, all right, we already admit that Jesus had a God too, so I'm not denying that. However, the God the Father still calls him God. 
So this God has a God. There's nothing wrong with that. Verse 10. And thou, Lord, in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy... This is talking about Jesus still. Whoa. Of thy head. Isn't he quoting the Psalms that we just read? And they shall perish, but thou remainest, and they shall wax old as doth a garment, and as a vesture thou shalt fold them up, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. Let me tell you something. If you ask that psalm writer, who are they talking about? They're going to tell you straight up, God. I saw God when I was writing this. If you were to ask, the Hebrew writer, who are you talking about? He would have said Jesus. Wait a minute, though. We just heard Jesus is not God. But that's not what the Hebrew writers believe. That's not what, that's not what they believe. I mean, we could all, if you don't take things in context, you're going to come up with these conclusions. All right? Let me show you another one. Go to John chapter 12. We're going to read from 36 to 41. Hallelujah. This is a powerful one. Oh, my goodness. Check this out. While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. These things spake Jesus, and departed and did hide him, and did hide himself from them. Now, this is all about Jesus right here. But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they, meaning the Jews of that time period, believed them not, that the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report, and, who, and to whom, has the arm of the Lord been revealed? This is quoting um, Isaiah 53 here. Go down to the, um, verse, um, verse 9. 39. Therefore, they could not believe because that Isaiah said again. Check this out. Now he's, he's quoting chapter 6. He has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts that they should not see with their eyes nor understand with their heart and be converted and I should heal them. If you read exactly what he was talking about in Isaiah 6, who was he talking about in Isaiah 6? Yahweh, the Lord. If you were to ask Isaiah, who are you talking about? Who you saw? He's going to say, I saw Yahweh, God of the Old Testament. And guess what? You're going to ask um, John, who did Isaiah saw? What is John going to say? He's going to say Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I'll rest my case. Jesus is God, and God is Jesus. I hope you understand that. God bless you. Um, I'm going to just take off what uh, Brother Stanley said when he started off, said we can't override all of this with one scripture. And, and one scripture that he did bring out that seems like it's to be saying Jesus is God is the John 1-1, one, one, which I counteract with verse 14, because it ends up saying the Word became flesh, and it had only begotten for, uh, of the Son of the Father. So it, it, it shows two different people. The Father didn't become flesh, and we all agree that the Father is God. That's how you get rid of John 1-1, one, one, but, but you can't override it. Brother Stanley says the Father uh, says that Jesus is God, then Jesus says the Father is God. I mean, come on, can you see why Christianity is so confused and they got 35,000 different denominations? Which one is it? It's a simple question, but all these theological uh, answers and all these things are trying to come mess up a simple question. The Father says Jesus is God, according to what Brother Stanley saying in that Psalms. Um, then Jesus says his Father is the only true God. I mean, it sounds like the Father of Jesus is confused. Anyways, Jesus is God. And then, Brother Stan, I couldn't believe that you said it. I mean, I, I, I had you say it in the questions if we go back and look at it, but you actually said yourself, Jesus is God, yeah, you're not denying that he has a God. That's what messes this whole thing up. How can somebody say that there's a God, has another God, and not say that there's two gods, but admit that they're two separate people? Brother, this is polytheism at its core, and that's exactly what I do when I debate Christians when I used to be one. Because whether you're Trinitarian or you're oneness, you're going to deal with this problem. But we can deal with the issue right here. You went to the old... Testament, once again, Psalms, I guess to try to say that Jesus is the Old Testament God. Well, brother, Acts chapter 3, verse 13 says, The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his son Jesus. That clearly shows that Jesus could not be the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, which the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob is the Old Testament God. That Old Testament God, who is God the Father, unless you deny that the Old Testament God is God the Father, if the Old Testament uh, 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 God is the Father, then and you clearly say that the Father and Jesus is not that person, they're separate persons, you're openly admitting then that he is not God unless you're denying God of the Old Testament. The New Testament also says in Acts chapter 2, verse 22, You men of Israel hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God. 
Jesus was approved of God, and I can't help that the Bible says he was a man. I can't help when he walked upon earth he was a man. Every question I gave you, you, you kept saying, you would answer the question and say, yeah, but as a man, but as a man. But then, when he left earth and went back to so-called his glory, which you were trying to say, see, he was God and he wasn't a man, you, had, you openly admitted in Revelation 3.12 when I said, after resurrection went up, you said he's still a man. To this day, you said he is actually still a man. So all these questions I asked, you didn't have to say, uh, well, as a man, uh, yeah, he has a God. As a man, he's a begotten son. As a man, you said he's still a man. So Jesus Christ was a man. If you ask any human being, if, if Jesus walked across the earth, he was a man. So it doesn't matter. The question wasn't, is Je the debate isn't, is Jesus man, God, and God? It doesn't, that, the question is, is Jesus? When you think of Jesus and who he was, is he God? He's not God the Father, and you won't even deny for 100% certainty with this book. We know that God the Father is God. We know that with a certainty. The question is, is Jesus God? If Jesus is not the Father God and are separate persons, it is over. If Jesus has a God, people, listen, Christians who are listening to this debate, if Jesus is God and he also has a God and are two separate beings, that is two gods. If you just want to make yourself go crazy over that, try to teach your kid that. That will be nothing but ultimate confusion. And Jesus is not the God of the Old Testament because according to the New Scriptures, New Testament Scriptures, Acts chapter 2, verse 22, verse 24, verse 32, Acts 3, 13, which I hope Brother Stanley will look at, um, 15 and 26, Acts chapter 4, verse 10, Acts chapter 5, verse 30 and 31. Clearly he's talking about the God, the Old Testament God, God the Father. God the Father raised up Jesus, and Brother Staley admits that. So Jesus cannot be that God of the Old Testament, because the God of the Old Testament, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, is actually the one who raised Jesus. That shows a separation. I'm not it's, – it's, we can do all these other things, but it does not matter. The only scripture that will make anyone look at it and think that Jesus is God is when it says in John 1.1, 1, 1, when it says, was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, and that, that's where we say, oh, well, the Word is Jesus, well, the Word is God. But verse 14, when you keep reading, the Word was made flesh. Was the Father made flesh? Yes or no? He was not made flesh. The Son was made flesh. So, the, when we get back to that, now, I'm going to break down Word real quick anyways. Word is Logos, and I know he knows this. Word is, is Logos, which means start of the thought. Now, here's your preexistence. I'll even give you an answer for your preexistence. Jesus would have preexisted as the thought of God, as the thought of the plan before everything happened. So in that sense, when he's part of his thoughts, that, in that sense, he was God as far as the thought of, his, of Logos. Logos is the thought of the thought. So God had a thought in his mind. Now, that actually goes back to other foreign religions of Logos where other people would supposedly came as God and became man. God, man. Look at all the religions, and they would actually be considered the word. And this is before Christ came. This is where all this stuff is actually coming. I can't get into the history of the Bible, but as you see, the reason why there's so many separate denominations is because they're speaking of separate people, but trying to call two people or three people one. So, separate people. Is Jesus God? If Jesus, is there somebody else named God, and he's separate than Jesus, y'all can sit around and try to figure out which one is God. But don't lie when it comes down to saying that it's two gods, and you actually said that earlier, that there's two gods you said that so the debate is is jesus god if you want to agree that there's two gods hey so have it have two gods but jesus is not god if god is the father if god is the father jesus is not god unless you believe in polytheism and i end it right there okay guys let's get into this public q a once again that's going to be maybe a 35 maybe 45 minute segment and once again, I'm going to ask everybody, please, no foul language. We don't do that here. Debate talk for you. Keep it clean. Of course, through the high volume of callers, I'm going to go down the line and make sure you keep your, your questions brief and uh, your comments pretty brief so I can go down and try to get as much people as possible. So let's get into this public Q&A, guys. Once again, the number is 646-716-7320. Just press the number one, and I'll add you into the conversation. If you're using Skype, uh, once again, call in and press the number one, and I'll add you into the conversation. Let's go to the first person here. Um, nine one nine two three nine. The live on debate talk for you. Nine one nine two three nine. The live on debate talk for you. That's you, Joel. Hey, how you doing? Can you hear me? Hello, I can hear you. 
Nine one nine. Hello. Yeah, how you doing? How are you? Welcome to the beat. I'm good. Welcome. How are you? Doing well. pretty good. You have a question? Yes. Um, I was calling. I was going to ask about um, when um, Stanley mentioned about the two, you know, being one. I was wondering if he could, you know, explain even the scripture that was given in um, in the Epistle of John when it mentions about three being manifest in heaven. Oh, you're talking about the first John, chapter 5? First John, chapter 5. Chapter 5, yes, verse, seven. verse 7. It says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. So right here it gives a clear distinction of the Father being God, the Word, which is Jesus Christ, separate from the Father, then the Holy Ghost. Yes. That, so how, that so how are you able to say that? that? Okay. That definitely states that. Um, I, the thing is... Um, the idea of the the idea of one has to be understood clearly. That is not always used in um, a singular sense. I mean, even in the English language that we speak today, um, the word one can be used as a unity. Plenty of times we see that. You know, um, a triangle has three sides, but it's still one triangle. You know, I mean, the word God is one word, but it has three letters to make it up. You know, if we see it, if we see, if we understand that things come together to make the one then we could understand the logic. It's not, it's not, you, we're not leaving logic completely. However, God takes it to the highest level. When he saw the man and the woman, um, Jesus himself even said, there are no more two but one. So how do we explain that in a logical sense? How could you say that they are two anymore? How in what way they are not two anymore? You see, that what's going to be, what happened is, when Adam was in a single sense, when he was just, when he was created, he was by himself. So in a situation like that, you would say this individual is one person. However, God said the two individuals, when they come together and cling to one another, that's one person too. So then you have one person A, Adam, and you have one person B, Adam and Eve. And then that's Eve. So Eve went to the farther point to even name them Adam. In other words, Eve could always say that her name is Adam, and Adam could say that his name is Adam. It doesn't mean that there's two Adam, but there are two portions of the Adam. That's where we have to look. There are divisions of the Adam. So Adam now, he's no longer one person alone. Now he's a division of the one person after he cleaves unto his wife. And we, if we understand that God has made man in his image, then we understand that Adam and Eve was made in God's image, but not Adam alone. Because Adam, when he was made alone, the scriptures clearly said what? It said it was not good that Adam was alone. So then that is something that was not part of God's plan because God's plan was to make man in his image, and that's why the crowning work was the female. So he had to make the male and the female together to make them one flesh, to be married, because when you look at God, God is a family. Okay, well, that, 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 was, that then would contradict Isaiah 45 and 5. It says, I am the Lord, and there is mm-hmm. none else. There is no God beside oh, me. Oh, most definitely. That scripture right there, you have to understand that that scripture in concept is focusing on God being compared to other false gods. There were Baal, there was Asherah, but you see, none of them helped out God to make the world. People were thinking that, you know, Asherah is the god of the sea, so he made the sea, and then the other one made the trees. But you see, there's another god over there, a god of the heavens. But you see, the scriptures are clear that when God is saying, no, I'm alone, when God said, I'm alone, the Father and the Son are the only one that's doing all this stuff here, not you guys. Zeus is not involved, Asherah is not involved, Baal is not involved, God alone is doing this. That's what it's saying. Okay. Okay. Do I appreciate you your question. Um, yeah, and uh, where are you calling from? Let the people know where you're calling from. I'm from from North Carolina. I right, definitely appreciate your call. Appreciate okay, well, I got, I got, I got, I got one more question. I got another person on the line with one more question. Right, is that okay? All right, okay. Right, yeah, yeah, real quick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. This this question is for the brother who has the monotheistic um, theology. <laughs> Um, yeah. And first covering thing is the 15th chapter and the 26th verse. Let me look at um, it. Let me get there. I'm going to get there in a second. Okay. What do you say, first Corinthians? Go Yes, please, sir. The 15th chapter. Do you mean verse 24 or do you, or do you want to go to 26? No, 28. 28, that is. Excuse me. Uh-huh. 1528? Yes. All right. Can you briefly explain to me um, how monotheism is is substantiated by this particular Mm -hmm. passage. All right, let me look at it. It says here, And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him 
that puts all things under him, that God may be all in all. And your question about now, this is Paul about what? Now, Paul is definitely speaking after the ascension. Now, Paul, Paul is speaking what? after the ascension. He's speaking yes, exactly. after the ascension. Exactly. I agree. So can you give me your position on that? Well, that's exactly what it says. Um, when, when Jesus was man, and then eventually he died and ascended, God has exalted him to a, to, the, to a position where he put everything under his feet. He it, says exactly that. So after, after the ascension, after the ascension, he's still the son, correct? Oh, most definitely. Right now, he's just the son. Yes. Mm. And he's mm. going to sub, he's going to subject or submit all things unto the hands of the Father, correct? Yes, because remember he. Can, so doesn't that give a distinction the between the two? If you, of course, there's a and, distinction between the two. Of course, there's a distinction between the Father and the Son. But you have to understand that um, at one time the Son was up there. And then he came down, and then the father exalted him up. So then it doesn't take away from the idea. It's the same individual that went down and came back up again. Can I comment yeah, on that, Minister? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brother Minister, I'm going to let you reply. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go yeah, that, I actually Thanks was going to put that in my closing. And 919, I appreciate your call. I appreciate your call, definitely. I appreciate you. Uh, go ahead, Brother Minister. Yeah, I was going to put that in my um, in my closing in 1 Corinthians. I actually couldn't get it into my rebuttal. But um, with that being said, um, um, with that is because the Scripture is actually showing that afterward, this is afterwards. Now, I'm saying Christ already resurrected, and if he's going back to glory or like Philippians mm-hmm. Scripture he brought up, going back to the equality or whatever, if he lost his humanity and he's up there now as a spirit or whatever he was supposedly in preexistence, he is supposedly back to being his God position. But even yeah. afterwards, even after all this, in this verse, it's showing that he's going to still be subject to the Father. The Father is God at all times and always will be. And Jesus is subject. So is, do you have a God subject to another God? So it shows see, that he's see, not when you God. Say that, when you say that, Brother Ministers, you're talking as if they're separate gods. If, if, if you're separate focusing people. on that position, if you're focusing on that position, then it's definitely going to make sense to you. However, that's not my position. I thought you said I thought you said that they were separate persons. Yeah, persons, not God. It's very, you see, you, you got to take the we got to take the words that are stated. I never said they were two separate gods. I said they were two separate persons that make up the one God. I made sure I said that many times. Okay, so uh, alone, alone, the Father alone is God, right? I mean, I mean, when I'm just I'm right now I'm just talking about the when Father God. When you say God. alone, you're saying without the Son. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, without the Son, can the Father be God without the Son? No. Woo! Oh, please explain that. And to the son us. The cannot be God, God without cannot the be God without Jesus. And the son cannot be the son cannot be the fa- um, God without the Father. Those two are Woo! inseparable, inseparable Woo! from everlasting to everlasting. That's that's the reason why God. All right, guys, we got some more questions, guys. <laughs> Once again, I know you guys enjoying this debate. Once again, the number is 646-716-7320. And, you know, when I let you in, you can say your name and where you're from. Cause I like to hear, you know, the listening audience and uh, where you're from. You know, we have callers from all across the globe. So let us know your name and where you're from. I definitely appreciate everybody that's tuning in to Debate Talk for you. All right, let's go to the next caller right here. Uh, 941276. You're live on Debate Talk for you. You have any questions or comments? Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. This is Brother Jason from South Florida. How's everyone tonight? They're pretty good. I want to uh, commend both gentlemen for tonight's debate, uh, taking on such a huge, huge subject. Um, as finite beings, when we're trying to explain the infinite, almighty Allah of the universe, it's like a mission impossible almost, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, I just want to read a quick scripture, and then I have a quick comment and quick question. Uh, in Romans 11, 33, 34, the Apostle Paul says, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of Elohim. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who has known the mind of Yahuwah, or who has been his counselor? Um, My quick uh, comment is, uh, Brother Stanley mentioned earlier that the name of the Almighty in the opening was Yahweh, and then he also said, um, Mighty God. Um, This debate becomes much clearer when we come into an understanding of the Almighty's name as Yahuwah, because in Matthew twenty-eight nineteen it says, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But in Acts two thirty-eight, Peter says, repent and let each one of you be immersed or baptized. In our English Bibles, it says in the name of Jesus, but those of us who've come into an understanding of the name knows it should say in the name of Yahushua. 
And Yahushua, the name Yahushua means Yahuwah saves. Mm-hmm. So when you're being immersed in that name, you're being immersed in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So Yahuwah is one. He is a God. He, uh, he's both the Father and the Son. You know, and it's something that, is, again, as uh, a finite beings, we can't totally wrap our heads around it. And now I have two questions for uh, Brother Minister. Um, in the first debate, I asked you this question, Brother, and you never really quite answered it. I asked you, what is your interpretation of Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Mm-hmm. And then the second question I have for you is you consider yourself a free thinker, which to me is very vague because I'm a free thinker. I think freely. But uh, so I want to ask you, do you believe in uh, the scriptures, both Old Testament and New Testament? Do you believe that they are true? Okay, I can answer both. Um, I don't know if you see my videos or nothing, but um, I came to the point where I actually, and I'm willing to debate this too, um, where I could believe I could show uh, contradictions and um, fabrications and all that with the with the uh, with the Bible. I used to believe wholeheartedly at one point in time that it was a uh, um, um, word of, word of God uh, uh, infallible. So no, I no longer believe that. Um, um, that's the whole another thing. And the Isaiah nine nine six, I, I think I do remember you when you when you were saying that. And um, my answer to you was, I don't deny that it says that. Um, I would look at it as if it was meaning um, when it says the everlasting Father. Are you the one that was talking about that when it says Father? Hello. Yeah, you already disconnected with him. I'm sorry about that, man. Because, oh, uh, okay. I think he was the one that was like, I think he was. His point was, uh, is how do I explain it? Uh, Isaiah 9, 6, when it was saying the everlasting Father, meaning, uh, and I'm assuming he was meaning, say, see, Jesus is the Father. Well, both me and Stanley both don't take that stand that he's the Father. And I would actually even turn, if it was if it was to be saying that he's the Father, it would show the contradiction, or you would have to agree that there's two fathers. And I don't think no monotheistic person would say that. And so a lot of people rectify it with saying that he's meaning Father of Eternity, referring to Jesus because he's like the, the that bring, he, through Jesus we get eternity. So, but I, 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 I can't say that. Can I explain Excuse what me? I mean? Could I, could I explain? When I, when I understand Father in that text, I, I see Father as creator, because to be a creator of something is to be the father of something. When mm-hmm. a person invents something, they call him the father of this. If Jesus is the creator of the world, and he made the world, the scripture says it clearly in John 1 and in Hebrews 1 and in Colossians mm-hmm. 1 and in Revelation. So the idea is if he created, if he's a creator, that he is a father. And he's from, he's from everlasting. He's the everlasting father. So, um, but when he asked you the question in the last debate, um, you asked him the question, but he, he his phone got cut off. But so mm-hmm. you never really answered it. So the idea is, you said I, you said you said um, the way people use this scripture is thus and so, but you never explained because he asked you to give your interpretation of the scripture, and you never did. Right. My, well, I did today. Hopefully, my interpretation would be, as I said, when I used to teach oneness, I would say, see, look, Jesus. I used to say there's one God. I never believed in two or three in one. Never, ever believed in that. So as a oneness person, we had to say, yeah, no, no, Jesus no, not is as a, a oneness now. What is your views about it now? My view, my view now is the fact that the whole thing is contradictive. Ah, so you're saying that scripture there is contradicting. Yeah, it would contradict other okay. scriptures that are a part of the book. Yeah, that, but I don't want to got bring it. that up. But, in, and that's a whole different got debate. It. Got it, got yeah. it. So if you yeah, believe it's contradicting... More, the yeah. question that we have to It's hard to answer him when I believe it's contradicting. Do you understand what I'm saying? I see. Without opening up a whole other can of worms. I understand right. that. I understand that. Yeah, let's get some more of these callers in here. Once again, you know the number, 646-716-7320. If you're using Skype, all you got to do is press that number one, and I'll add you into the conversation. I see we've got a lot of Skype callers out here right about now. So let's go to the next person. Once again, say where you're from, say your name, and go into your question or whatever your comment may be. Once again, I appreciate the listening audience for tuning into the Bay Talk for you. Let's go to the next person, 413-863, you're live on the Bay Talk for you. Hello. Hi. Um... I have a question. I'm sorry. Uh, my name is Sister Amana from Massachusetts. Uh, and, um, thank you. I have a question uh, for the Christian minister. Brother minister, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The brother like minister to... or the Christian? I mean, is that... Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not a Christian, I'm a Christian, Christian today. Yeah. Okay, the one who believes Jesus and God are the same, are the that's, same person. Oh, okay. brother... Stanley. Okay, that's Stanley. Yeah. So my family, yeah. I don't believe they're the same person, yeah. by the way, but go ahead. Um, right. God and Jesus, God is Jesus, Jesus God, right? Okay. Yeah, I don't think they're the same person. All right, but 
God is Jesus and Jesus is God. Am I on the right track? No, you're not. <laughs> okay, can you explain to me? Okay. Because the, 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 the way you said it was, uh, was an ambiguity, because when you say God, you have to be specific with God. There's God the Father and there's God the Son. They're two different individuals, but both of them come together to make one God. When I okay. say one God, not one person, but one, one entity. Okay, okay, so what? Okay, can you explain to me what stri- what scripture is that that says that God is the Son and God is the Father? Because yeah. I I I, I okay. know what you read in John that that the the word was um in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was okay, with God. not a problem. That, that that um go go over to um Colossians chapter three. Um, hey, would you say, Brother Stanley, Colossians three? Colossians three. Colossians three. And I would love for you guys to explain that scripture to me. But, but, but since you're the caller, I, I, I believe the answer would be there. But if you could explain that to me. Go to verse 17 and tell me what it says. And tell me what does that mean to you. Can you, can you, do you have Colossians 3? Do I you have it right there with it. you? Because um, I'm, 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 I'm still strolling. Okay, so if you can just read it to me then. All right, it says here. Um, Colossians. Oh, okay. Colossians. <laughs> Col three seventeen. It says here, um, and whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Right, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. So, who who is supposed to be giving thanks? Well, it says give thanks to God and the Father. Who's God? God is the Father, but it's still not saying but it says that God and the Father. The Father. And the Son. He says God and the Father. But if God is the Father, who's God? Who, who, if God is the Father, who's the Father? I can answer that, man. You playing words? Okay, wait, 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 wait. I need to ask one question. Then, I, then I'm just going to get up. I'm, uh, I'm just, uh, just going to get up. Okay, are you really, really familiar that I, I know the Bible has not been tampered with, but it has been translated. Okay, it's mm-hmm. the translation of the Bible. It's like they call the Holy Spirit a he, and we all know that the, the, the three that bear witnesses in heaven. Okay, when the Most High, when God said that he, it, it was, it was um, that we're going to make man in our image or whatever, there were not two men up there, so we know that Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, we're talking about a family of male and female. The Holy Spirit being a female and the Father and the Son, okay? Mm-hmm. So, wow. I'm not understanding where 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 this is coming from because the Father said, "Let us make man in our image." So Christ has been there all the way from the beginning, okay, mm-hmm. in the Spirit that He was in the Spirit, and the Father sent Him down on Earth in the flesh, okay. But it still does not mean. And that analogy that you made about you can call Adam Eve, you can't call Adam Eve. They became one when they had um, intercourse. That's how they became one in the Spirit. But you cannot walk up to Adam. Eve and call Eve Adam's um, brother. No, no. Read Genesis 5, verse 2. It says that he named them Adam. All right, Brother Minister, you can reply. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm kind of, I'm, 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 I really don't have much to say. Um, I, I, I agree with her as far as you can't call Adam Eve and Eve Adam. I understand the meaning of one becoming one, but it doesn't make the Eve that person or that person Adam, and that's the debate. Is Jesus God? Is he that person? But I, I there's only one. Do you, you agree that the scripture says that? What's that? The scripture says in Genesis chapter 5, verse 2, that he named them Adam. Okay, and Adam means what when you break it down? No, no, no. no, no I'm asking you, did it say that? Yeah, it says that. So what does Adam mean in that? Okay, so then if it says that, then, then that's what I'm claiming that it says. Oh, I'm yeah, I see what you're saying. I see what, it says. I see what you're saying. You're saying it says that, so you can only repeat what it says. And then it says also that he made him one flesh. So that if you you can name one flesh one name, There's nothing wrong with that. Can you name two individual people? Can you say there's one God, meaning singular, but two people can be that one God? That one singular individual. So you're saying two people can be that one individual? No. I'm saying the two individuals, there's two separate individuals, but when they are together and connected together, like the man and the woman are together, then uh-huh. they are one. So when they're God separated, is what spirit, are they? Spiritual. When they're when separated, they're, what see, are the they? Idea is, the idea is they, not, they can never be separated again unless it's by death. So the, so the idea is what God has put together, let no man put us under. The idea is when it's put together, it's together. 
So the idea, um, Father and the Son is inseparable. That's the reason why they are who they are. God is, Jesus is supposed to be seen as God, as his association is to his Father, and likewise the other way around. But you start, you, you say the whole debate that they're separate. Yeah, they're separate individuals. Like my right hand is separate from my left hand, but if you hit my hand, you're still hitting me. So that's what I'm saying. As an individual, when they're separated as two individuals, what are they individually? What is God the Father when Jesus is, is, is his own individual? What is God the Father without He's God Jesus? the Father. He's God the without Father. Without Jesus? Without he Jesus, he's be God. God the Father. Without the Jesus, with, when, you say, when, you say, when you say without Jesus, are you saying that Jesus, are we hypothetically saying that he doesn't exist? No, yeah, I'm, say, I'm, no, I'm saying they're two separate beings up in heaven in preexistence, two separate individuals, you said. When God mm-hmm. the Father's up there and he's separate, is no, he No, no, I'm asking you, what do you mean by the word without? Do you mean that no existence? That, like, like hypothetically saying that, let's, let's say there's no Jesus around? No, I'm not saying? saying that. No, I'm saying when you use the word separate, they're mm-hmm. two separate. That means yes. they're not together at one, at, at, in some way. No, no. You there? Yeah, well, yeah, we here, brother. I got to get some more of these questions, baby. We got a lot of people standing by. Once again, you're now listening to Debate Talk View Radio. We have a lot of people with a chat room right about now. If you want to go to the chat room, let's go to www.blogtalkradio.com slash debate talk for you. Click on the show, Is Jesus God Revisited? And scroll down at the bottom, you're going to see a little box right there. We have a few people in here right now uh, interacting with each other. Once again, shout out to Galactic Scientists. We have Ed. Yeah, my gospel revealed. What else we have in here? We have a lot of people in the, in the room. Only times, Miss Judah, 1949. Once again, you know, there's a lot of people in here interacting. So we got Sound X Mind 7. Shout out to you being in here, RDA, interacting with each other. So once again, if you want to go in the chat room, go to the website, www.blogtalkradio.com, slash the big talk for you. And you can bring forth the information out there and uh, chop it up with other individuals all across the globe. Let's go to the next person, guys. Who's next? To uh, bring a question now on the big talk for you. Let's see who's here. We got four four three two two four. You're live on the big talk for you. You have a question or a comment? Four four three two two four. You're live on the air. You're live on the big talk for you. You have a question or a comment? All right, going once, going twice. All right, we got to go on to the next person. Once again, if you have any questions, press the number one. And if you do, you know, let's say uh, one of your questions was answered already, you can press the number one again. I'll take you off the switchboard. Let's go to the next person. Um, 740584. You're live on the Facebook view. Hi, this is Scott from Ohio. Hey, how you doing? Uh, my, que- my question is, Stanley, um, right okay. now, is Jesus a man? Right now, Jesus has human flesh, yes. Yeah, it's human flesh. Okay. Uh, I want you to look at 1 Timothy 2.5. It says, for there is one God and one mediator between God and man. Yes. yes. The man, Christ Jesus. Yes. Right there it's saying Jesus Christ is not God. Right there it's saying that he's a mediator between right. the God the Father and human beings. You have to, you've got to specify it. If you, you, can't, yeah. you can't take a part of the scripture and ignore the rest of the scripture. You have to take it all. When we pray, do we pray to God as both parts or just God the Father? As we pray right now, we could only pray to God the Father because Jesus instructed us that you asked me that before, at one time, you could ask me stuff, but when that day comes, meaning his death and his crucifixion and resurrection, he said when that day comes, you pray to the Father in my name. So then, you see, at one time, it was okay to ask Jesus directly, but at, 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 at another time, he said, you know what, from now on, because of the ministry that we are planning, the plans that we had laid out, this is the rule now. That, you ask the Father in my name. Mm. Okay. So now you can just ask the Father. You said, you said earlier that God the Father cannot be God the whole without Jesus, right? It's, 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 it's impossible. It's like, it's, like, it's like saying that God can't exist. Can't exist. Okay. Can't, 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 can't exist. I, I, I have a question. When Jesus okay. died for three days, did God uh-huh. the Father cease being God? Well, you're you you assuming from that question that they are separated even after he died. Right. When he died, I'm saying he died as a man, not as spirit mm-hmm. form or anything else. He ceased to be you. alive. Again, you're assuming okay. that when he died, they're, they're separated. Then they would oh, never see? cease to separate. They've always been together, even during death. Hmm. I don't agree at all. 
I'm not going to comment. Can I comment on that? Well, you can. It's fine to disagree. Can I say something? Yeah, brother. Yeah, go ahead, brother. Go ahead. I like what the I like what the brother asked, and I think that's what a lot of people is considering. Um, Jesus, like Jesus was a man, okay, right? When when Jesus was walking on earth, was he a man or was he both God and man? You see, um, I, I say that he gave that there was a portion of God that he had. He had this authority of God, but however, he was completely dependent upon man. Like in other words, he had the authority to forgive sins. He had the authority to cast out demons, not in the name of God, but in his name. He had the oh, authority oh. to do these things. So he had authority of God. When he was walking in man, when he was walking as man on earth, but he wasn't doing that the other prophets did it. But he was so, still so fully as, man. As a man, was, yeah. mm-hmm. what, what, what the point was, I think, what the dude was trying to say was, according to the scriptures, that mm-hmm. we use the word God. It just says mm-hmm. God. It doesn't say God the Father. It doesn't say none of these. It doesn't say that when it's referring to God. It doesn't and, have to. In that, so in those verses that he that he brought up, it's saying mm-hmm. God and Jesus, the man, was uh, a, a mediator. Yes. So when we say, when it's referring to Jesus in the verse, yes. Jesus was not God in that verse. Jesus was not mentioned as God in that verse, right. Right. So so uh, if Jesus was mentioned all the time as the son of God or, or someone lesser than God, it's only it saying God. Is it, did you say all the time? No, I'm saying sometimes. Oh, sometimes. It, it, oh. Go ahead. Yeah. So, so the point I'm getting to is... The times that it's saying God, when it's saying God, the majority of the time, well, can we say that ninety five percent of the time when it's saying God, you say we need to define what God is who who what's God he's talking about, God the Father, God the Son. Well do the math mm-hmm. then. And then if it's say if it's ninety five percent of the time it only says God. It just says G O D. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then and you would probably look at them most of them and say, Oh yeah, that's referring to the Father. Yeah. It's not referring to Jesus. Yeah. The debate is is Jesus God? So do we have to put is Jesus God meaning God the Father or God the Son? We just said God. Now, now this, is where it, this is where the application comes in. You're saying 95% of the time you put a number on it, and that's fine. I don't I, mind the number. That was just however, me saying, whoa, that was giving an example. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I know, I know, I know, I know. But let's just, let's just use that number, hypothetically speaking. That number, I could only agree that it could only be applied to the New Testament. However, the, the 95, the 90, I, just, I believe 95%, I could throw down that 95%, 95% too, in the Old Testament is referring to the Son, Jesus Christ. So, however, so we have a situation here. Even if it is 95% as the New Testament was the Father, what about the 5%? Should we ignore it? Should we take 100% of the scriptures, or should we just take 95% of the scriptures? How are we supposed to look at it? All right, guys, we got a whole lot more callers here. <laughs> Once again, I appreciate you guys. You know, we got some more callers. We got to get to the people, though. Uh, so far, 27 minutes has passed. This is supposed to be a 35-minute segment, but, I, you know, of course, I'm going to extend the time. You know, I like I like hearing from the people out there, so, of course, I'm going to extend the time. So, once again, you know the number, 646-716-7320. And, of course, after the public Q&A will be the final statement. That's going to be seven minutes each. So far, it's definitely been a classic debate. But uh, let's go to the people. We got more people online. Let's see what got to say. Uh, 708705, you're live on the Bay Talk for you. State where you're from and what's your name? This is Brother Marcel. I'm from Chicago. Stanley Sylvain. I tell you, <laughs> boy, you amaze me. Brother, you did your thing. I'm telling you, I was pumped this whole debate. This was a classic debate from the Praise beginning God. to the end. My brother, you smoked it. I, mean, I, I, I was trying to put together some notes and stuff, but I'm like, man, this dude is killing it. I mean, <laughs> man, you killed it. Praise brother God. Minister, you're, a good Praise God. you're a good debater. De- you're a good debater, brother. I ain't, I ain't trying to bash you. You're a good debater. You you, you no. did your thing, too. You had your game plan, Praise but I just God. really don't think it worked. Praise Stanley did his thing. Um, I'm going to try to get into a, a couple quick things because I know we got a lot of callers. <laughs> brother Minister, real quick. Uh-huh. Um. I got a few just a yes and no questions. Then I, I want to make a point. Um, have any messenger ever said glorify me before the world uh, was? I'm not sure of that. I not to my not okay. to my knowledge. I can't. I can't say that. All right. What well, answer is no? Have any other messenger been sinless? Excuse, excuse me. Say that again. Have any it. other messenger, prophet, or whatever been sinless? No, not, not according to the Bible. Okay. If the Father. Uh, Let's say the Father, not Jesus, the Father. Let's uh-huh. say the Father took on a flesh, took on flesh. Would he lose his divinity? 
If the father took well, on flesh, would he lose his divinity? Um, I'm not sure about that because I don't know how that works. That's a powerful works, on, question. That's a powerful yeah, that question. is. That's a that's a great question. That's a that's great a question. That's a powerful question. Because okay, well, dependent, I would think I would. My answer would be it would be con, uh, dependent on the religion or the doctrine of how you're say you're saying it. Because like for instance, in some religions, they say gods come down and become men, and then they're men gods. No, no, you know, no, 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 no. I'm not. Let's, I, you're I, not talking I'm about, talking, talking about worldviews. You're talking about if that stuff actually happened. Let's say you even believe. You know. From your understanding, from what God revealed to you, everything, there's no doubt about it. I don't care who uh-huh. cares what anybody says, but you know for sure that God the Father came in the flesh. The idea is, could, would, first of all, would that be possible? And second of all, um, would that contradict anything? That, that's, that's, a, that's a great question, but it, I would say it would contradict when it comes to the point that, um, like, say, for, uh, say I, he said just use it as the Father, but when, for instance, like when Jesus came and he came in the flesh, he he would have had to have been just flesh in order for him to able be have the ability to sin or the whole thing's a fake. If he could have never had the opportunity to sin, if he's God, he couldn't have the opportunity to sin. Do you understand what I mean by that? So when he became a right. man, he had to be just a man, had an opportunity to sin. So he couldn't have been God. God can't sin. Yeah, but exactly. I, I was questioning but, the idea. I was questioning the idea is that God Himself, the Father, mm-hmm. the one you call the Father, if right. He make can can He make a decision to say. I'm going to become flesh to live with man. Mm-hmm. And would he still be God when he's doing that? He said, and he says, look, I'm going to play by the rules of the rules that I have governed, that I have set up as man, so I can be an example to how to live as man. Could when you say that way, God can do what he wants to do. Aha. <laughs> uh-huh. Exactly. He can do what he wants to do. That's exactly what we're saying about Jesus. I, mean, I, I think exactly. anyone who believes in God or a God or something, well, I hope that they're That's exactly saying that what God we're saying about Jesus. That's exactly <laughs> what we're saying. But you're saying Jesus and God the Father is two separate people. No, but you, we're you telling can't, you, we're telling you, you can't that get God, Jesus, Jesus can become man. He can, be, he can be God and then become man and still be God. Okay, so because let me ask you this question. Do you believe, do, with that analogy that just both brought up, do you believe Jesus was the Father who became flesh? Yes or no? No. Exactly. No. So then you can't, you can't even... Then you're no, sitting there. the point is, you're missing the point. The point is, if the Father, as God can do well, it... Well, he did it, Jesus, though, so we, I'm going to talk about what Listen, listen, listen. The idea is, if God can do it, which you granted, you said God can do anything. If Jesus... Let's just I say said the way you put it, the, the way you wait, put wait, it... Wait, I know, God. I know. Let's just say, hypothetically speaking, that Jesus I don't wanna, is I, God. I, honestly, I'm not going to answer a hypothetical question because we both don't agree that the Father became Jesus. So it, I'm not falling no, into that no, trap. No, 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 I didn't say that. I, said, I ain't falling into that trap, that, bro. The, 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 <laughs> Jesus is God. Let's just say Jesus is God. Let's say you grant me that. Jesus is God. If Jesus is God, then he could do anything. Correct? If he's God the Father. No, if he's God, period. Can he do it? It, I could always say I only believe in one God and God the Father. That's all. That's what I, I believe know, in. Who's but, God? But I, I know what you believe, but I'm telling you, if Jesus is God, if you were God, can you do it? If I was a God, could I come down and, from, from being God, come and become no. a human and still yeah, be God? Yeah. Would you be able to do it to be if you were to, if you were the Almighty God? Could you do that? To our to our knowledge of all of us. Who's listening? Whatever you, whoever you believe God is, I would think that we would think God is the highest and that He could do anything. That's my point. So if but Jesus I'm not is saying, but highest, I don't believe Jesus do is God. That's what I'm saying. That. You're trying to get me into the just, trap. Jesus no, no, is not Father no, no, God. It's not a trap. It's not a trap. It's a point that we're trying to make that the idea that Jesus, um, our our argument would that's our argument that we believe that Jesus is God. Is God, so He came can do in that. the flesh. I know, exactly. I know that. I'm, I'm saying That's I know. That's the only point that we were making from that. We're not trapping you. We're not trapping but, you. But my, my point I want to make to you, though, with that, if, when you say it like that, if Jesus, if, if, the, if it came out to be that Jesus was God, then Jesus, because we would all automatically just believe God can do anything. But what I'm saying to you today is we said the Father is God, so we don't have to talk about what is. If the Father is God and you openly admit that Jesus is not the Father, that I don't need to talk about it because we don't believe the Father came. In the flesh. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, hold on, man. Brother Marcel, you have any, uh, any more words to say? Because we got to go on yeah, to the next question. Yeah, Perfect. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I did want to make one more point. Then I'm I'm going to get straight up out of here, Sal. But uh, I did appreciate the brother Stanley uh, making that point for me. 
Um, I just want to uh, make a real quick point, then I'm out of here, because um, you keep saying, um, does Jesus have a God? Uh, and and, and um, when Jesus was on the cross and he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He was quoting from um, Psalms 22, right? We, we we agree with that, right? He was quoting from Psalms 22. David, uh, it was it was a song, but it was it was a prophecy. Okay. Uh-huh. Now, now, so uh, you know this is about Jesus. You know this ain't about David because uh, uh, in verse um, let me see, in verse six it talked about how the Messiah was rejected. Uh, in verse seven it talked about how they hurled insults at the cross. Um, verse um. It, it it even goes in, in uh, verse 14 and 15. It even talks about how he was pierced. Uh, it, he was pierced in other hands and the feet. So we know that's about uh, Jesus. Okay. Now, I just want to bring to you verse 9 and 10. And my question is, this is when Jesus, this is when uh, the Father became Jesus God. It says, but thou art. He that took me out of the womb. Where are you at, brother? Where are you at? Where are you at? Where are you at? I'm in Psalms 22, verse 9 and 10. Okay. It says, Thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breast. I was cast upon thee from the womb. Thou art my God from my mother's belly. And the point is this. The idea is this. When Jesus took on flesh, Jeremiah mm-hmm. thirty two twenty seven. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. When mm-hmm. Jesus took on, but prior to Him taking on flesh, He preexisted as the Word, and the Word was was God. When He took on flesh, God became His Father because God. I mean, the Father became His God because the Father is God of all flesh. But before that, He He He, he preexisted as the Word. Now He is forever the God Man. He never sees. That's why I ask you: Will uh, will the Father lose his divinity? If Jesus is God, he never lost his divinity. He never lost just because he took on flesh, a flesh nature, doesn't mean he will lose his divinity. It just means he has a dual nature, and that's why. And the flesh, so 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 the Father would always be as God. That's that, that's the point I wanted to make. And you said something about the Word. I just wanted to point out, uh, you know, Revelation six and nine. Even proves uh, that the word is Jesus, and that uh, uh, one First uh, John five and seven proves that the word is Jesus. Uh, but that's all. Um, good debate. You could comment, bro. I really enjoyed it, man. Uh, good looking Sal for setting up this debate, and God bless everybody. I appreciate your call, brother minister. You can reply. Yeah, the only thing I um I don't I thought I heard him say that Jesus is the Father. I'm not sure if he said that. Um, but I know. Both me and the brother I'm debating with. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, Jesus is not the Father. The Father is not Jesus. But Jesus okay. is God. Jesus okay. is God. So I take the same position as Stan. No, the Father is not Jesus. Jesus okay. Not the Father. I, I thought that's what you was explaining in, in, uh, when you were saying in the Psalms. So the only thing that I'm the only thing that I'm getting back to is the fact that um, the Father is God. None of us deny that. And I guess we're saying that Jesus is also. God, but we're saying that it doesn't mean that means two gods. Is that correct with everyone so far? Uh, I think we lost Brother Stanley. Hold on one second. Let me just check the phone. Oh, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Yeah, Stanley, do me a favor. I think you got to press the number one, brother. Press the number one. Uh, press the number one. I think I lost you somehow. Uh, it could be a blog or a video thing or something like that. Uh, press the number one. Okay, I see you now. All right, there you go, Stan. You can, you can go ahead. Yeah, hello. Yeah, you muted me, man. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I got it too, man. I got to get game control, brother. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, was, did you get to hear that, though, Stanley? Was that or, – or, I just want yeah, to make yeah, sure before yeah. we get to the it's ending. Exact, you said it correctly. Um, uh, okay. We believe they're two separate individuals, but they're, but they're, um, they're one God together. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. All right, guys. We got more callers here. You know, I appreciate your patience. Everybody been standing oh, by. Can I say something quick? Can I say something yeah, quick? Yeah, real quick. Go ahead. Oh, brother Marcel, thank you, man, for your call and thank you for your input. It was powerful. That um, brother Marcel, by the way, is the one that's doing the song, and you guys need to check out his music. The brother is no joke. He is a yo. That brother can rap. That brother got skills. Anyway, that's all I got to say. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, let's see. Nine one nine two three nine. You're live on the Bay Talk for you. Nine one nine two three five two two three nine. Nine one nine two three nine. Can you hear me? Hello. 
All right, we got to move on to the next person, I guess. Once again, the number is 646-716-7320. That's 646-716-7320. If you have any questions, all you got to do is press the number one, and I'll add you to the conversation. If you're calling in via Skype, all the international listeners out there, if you're calling in via Skype, make, make sure you press the number one one time. If you press it again, it's going to take you off the switchboard. But, you know, uh, uh, if you press it a third time, it's going to bring you at the bottom of the switchboard, guys. So make sure you stay patient. I'm going to get to you. I'm trying to get to as much people as possible. We have a little more time here. Uh, right now is uh, 25 minutes left uh, live on the air. But we're definitely going to probably get into the overtime part of the show. So let's get some more callers here. Uh three one five four six zero. You're live on the Bay Talk for you. Three one five four six zero. State your name and where you're from. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Good. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Shalom everybody. This is Brother Sha'Allah from the Rod of Instruction, Syracuse, New York. Brother Sha uh, Brother Sha'Allah, praise God. What's good, what's good. Um, I've been listening to the debate from the very beginning. And um, I'm kind of confused on Brother Stanley's stance because you said that you were coming from a monotheistic point of view, which means the belief in one deity as the Almighty. But yet you're saying that Jesus is the other Almighty, so we have two. That would make it polytheistic, correct? If they're two separate gods, yes, that's called by, by theist. That's bi-theism. I'm not a bi So you're I, not so you're not monotheistic then. You're bi-theist. I'm not bi-theist, I'm saying. I'm not bi-theist. Oh, I right. believe that the Father is a division, and I believe the Son is a division. When you think of a division, think of division. If you have one over two plus one over two, what would it equal? Two over two over two equals one. So the idea is the numerator can change, but the denominator never change. The denominator is God. See, that's, the numerator that's what is what I mean. That's what you've really been so, so that's what you've been doing really the whole debate is like talking in circles and you know, doing wordplay and, and this and that. No, you really see you calling it word play. Um, I'm not well, playing. Well, um, I got a question for you though. Does does God does God have a head? Who who's the head of God? If Christ if Jesus is God, does Jesus mm-hmm. have a head? Now understand I'm referring that to when he was, is eleven and three. First okay, I understand what you're saying. You're talking about the time when he became yeah, man. Shala, 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 shala. Let him reply. Let him reply. Get when him. he became All man, right. yes, he gave up his position, and yes, at, after that moment, he had a head, and he never lost that position. Now he has a head over him for life, for eternity. So the idea is if you're looking at the future, the judges, the past, or the entire time period, then you're using wrong exegesis. You have to use all of it, not just the future part. That's the part after the fact. I can't have a person that's a billionaire and then he became a servant just to show you how to be a servant and then say, oh, how could he, he, he's never a billionaire. Look at him there. But never address the past when he was sitting in the throne as an ability. No, you're going to hold your focus on the future part when he became a servant. That's not fair. That's what you're doing. Can I call okay, me? Okay, so what about okay. Colossians 3, chapter, uh, chapter 3, verse 1? Okay. That's good. That's good. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. It says, he then be risen in Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ uh-huh. sits on the right hand of God. Of God, that's yes. Two separate, that's two separate beings. You, you, so you're doing saying the same thing again. You're, using, you, you're doing the same thing again, brother. Um, you're using the future ahead, sense ahead. after he was ascended. You're still focusing on that time period. Of course, at that time period, he got ascended to the right hand of God, and now um, he's not... He has a head at that moment. Yes, I'm not denying that, Brother Shalala. I'm not denying that. Oh. So are so are you bi? So are you? Uh, do you believe in bi-theism, polytheism, or monotheism? I'm a monotheist, but I believe in binitarianism. I believe that the two that the two becomes one. The two are one, almost like the, 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 Jesus Himself said it. He said, "I pray that they be one, as we are one." For him to even state that, um, and when he said they, he's talking about the apostles. I pray that the 12 apostles become one. Let me ask you a question. How could 12 be one? You call that wordplay? Well, explain that to me. No, 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 no. The wordplay is you're saying that Jesus is not the Father, but he is God, but you're saying that there are two, God split himself in half, and Jesus is, God, is one said, half of him, and then he's the other half. And it just doesn't make sense. Wait, 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 yeah, wait. You said, let you me said ask you something. Split. You said God split, right? You said let, let, me let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. Jesus to the earth. Okay. 
Okay, let me ask you something. When, 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 when Genesis, in Genesis chapter 3, in Genesis 3, when Adam and Eve are together, were they cut in half? No. But they're two separate, they're two separate No, no, I'm asking you, did, were they they're cut in half? No, I'm asking you. Listen, I'm asking you. No, they were not you. cut in half. Oh, no, Adam was not cut in half. No, Adam was okay, not cut how, in half. How no. do they make the one then? How do they make one? Explain it. Do the best you they, can explain because that. that. Because they're not there. But, but if you look, you've seen Adam there, and then you've seen Eve there. You didn't just see uh-huh. Adam and Eve fused together with like, like, like some kind of transsexual with two genitalia. No, I saying. didn't say there was so one that, person. With that, that's, I was going to go ahead and let somebody else come in. Oh, that, that's and, uh, not all the brothers. Sha'ala, Sha'ala, you're misinterpreting my words. I didn't say it was one person. Because the, what you're describing is a morph, a morph, a morphing of, to, um, of two individuals becoming one transsex. No, I didn't say it was one person. I, I want to say something to get the chance. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. not a problem. But, I mean, what, I'm, what, I'm saying, Sha'ala, what I'm saying, Sha'ala, is that the two individuals, separate individuals, could, are considered spiritually one. So when they are spiritually one, this reflects the, uh, the, um, the, 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 um, the God of heaven. That reflects God. That's all I'm saying. God is plural. That's what I'm saying. Mm. I'm not saying they're one, it's one person. I'm not saying that. But go ahead. All right, Brother Minister, you can reply. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. I, I think that that's where he got me confused. I think the brother's very intelligent on how he's explained. I, I like, at least he can explain his point, but he's also taken away from the fact that, I mean, if he says he's monotheistic and – and, and then he, now he mm-hmm. says bi, biotheism, meaning two and one and all this. And, but the point I'm going to get to, he says that afterwards. He says, well, after Christ came down and this and that. Okay, so this will be real quick. Before Christ came down, he preexisted. Before he came down, was he God up there? Yes. Okay, and then there was also God the Father? Yes. Okay, then there's Christ came individual. down. There's two individuals there. Okay, so, so when one individual came down, Jesus that was God up there, he came down, he was no longer God, right? He was no longer God in the sense of divinity or position. Okay, so he was just man. He, he didn't have omniscience anymore. He didn't have okay, omniscience so, anymore. That. Right, so he, so he wasn't God in that sense, like God's om, omniscient. You know what I mean? So when he came as a man, yes. man he became lower. He, right? Yes, he had to follow rules. He had to follow okay, rules so of he man. Was, he had to. So when, as a, when he was here as a man, he came down out of heaven, came as man, he was not God. We're going to make that clear, right? He was, he was not a man. God in divinity, but he was okay, God in okay. authority. Okay, he was God in authority, but not divinity. Exactly. Okay, so can so can God be God without divinity? Can God? Well, Jesus is the point. Yes, that means yes. Oh, that's a whole different belief, man. No that's way. A whole that's, different that's, belief. That's what, that's what Trinitarians that's believe. Belief. That's what Trinitarians believe. That's what Binitarians believe. So this is not a whole different belief. It is a belief that's been around. All right, guys, let's look at some more of these questions here. Let's get some more of these questions. Once again, you know the number, 646-716-7320. Once again, this is a classic debate for all of you that's online on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Make sure you copy and paste this debate and put it on your page. Let people know that Debate Talk for You Season 4 is live on the air. If they want to chime in, they have any questions, you know the number, 646-716-7320. Once again, we have thousands of people all across the globe checking out Debate Talk for You Season 4. Once again, as usual, I appreciate all of your support, guys. So make sure you uh, spread all over uh, uh, Twitter, Instagram, all over social media. And I see the chat room. Once again, there's a lot of interaction going on. There's a lot of things going on in the chat room. So if you want to join in at the chat room, like I said, go to www.blogtalkradio.com slash debate talk for you and click on the show, Is Jesus God Revisited? All you got to do is scroll down. You're going to see a little box. And once again, you can just chop it up with some people in there, put out your information. There's a lot of intelligent people out here bringing down some knowledge in the chat room. You know, I see some more people joining in, and uh, for those people that's in the room, and it's uh, you have a, you're listed as guests, and there's a number behind you. What you got to do is uh, log on and sign up for Blog Talk Radio. Once again, once you sign up, you can create your profile name, and uh, once you go back in the search box, type in Debate Talk for You, and click the follow button. That's another way to stay relevant on what's going on at Debate Talk for You, and that's also another way you can guarantee to check out all the shows each and every week on Debate Talk for You. I appreciate all the new listeners out there of Debate Talk for You that's tuning in. Let's get some more of these callers, guys. We have 16 more minutes live on the air, but we're definitely going to go into the overtime part of the show because we're trying to get as much of your questions as possible. Once again, you know the number, 646-716-7320. Don't be shy. Press the number one. Let your voice be heard. Say your name and where you're from. Let's go to the next person. 315-863. You're live on the Bay Talk Field. 
315-863. You're live on the Bay Talk for you. Can you hear me? 315, going once. 315-863, going twice. All right, we got to move on to the next person. Once again, once you press that number one, I'll add you into the conversation. But if you don't have a question, just press the number one twice, and I'll take you off the switchboard. The number is 646-716-7320. Let's go to the next person. 252-822. You're live on the Bay Talk for you. Assalamu alaikum. This is Brother Raheem from New York. Uh, shalom to both brothers. What's going Peace, on, brother. Sal? Uh, you know, uh, I want to get right into it. Uh, I, I I think Stanley knows my position. And, yeah. Uh, they, both, they, they, they both did a good job, but right now I'm going to have to go in a little bit. I'm going to have to correct you on something, uh, Stanley. You said right. about 15 minutes ago that uh, Jesus did things in his name, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, that's I think that's wrong. Luke 11, uh, verse 20 says, but if I meaning Jesus, is all in red, meaning he's talking, with the finger of God, cast out devils, Mm -hmm. no doubt the kingdom of God is come upon you. So Jesus used the finger of God, meaning the power of of, Okay, I'm I'm glad you said that because I need to clarify my point then. Um, When when I say in the name, like you notice that when the apostles in the book of Acts, when they cast out demons, they have to say that come out of them in the name of Jesus. You agree with that, right? Okay, but you said but, but Jesus, did Jesus, did Jesus. No, I, and I'm saying I'm clarifying my point right now. So, um, okay. so you agree? You agree, right, right, brother Raheem, that Jesus did not ever say stuff like that. Oh, come out of him in the name of Jesus. Come out, get thee behind me in the name of of, of Father, my Father. Get out of them. He didn't say that. He just said, okay. get out. Okay. He just said, okay. get out. Come okay. out of him, you unclean spirit. Okay. So when the apostles spoke, they spoke differently. They said, get out of him in the name of Jesus. Come out of him in the name of Jesus, in the name of the okay. Lord Jesus. They did that every okay. time. Stanley, I, I got so, a little time. Let, 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 I'm, let me sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, brother. I'm sorry. I'm I got sorry. what you're saying, though. I got yeah. what you're saying, but I just corrected you because Jesus himself said he uses God's power to cast out devils. We're not talking about Yes, I agree. Else. I agree. Now, I agree. Now, now, now I'm gonna correct you again because you said the other. I don't consider that to be a correction, by the way, because I'm consistent, I'm consistent with that. Go ahead. You said the other guy said in the name of Jesus. Jesus Himself said, "Not everybody who call in My name, okay, who say mm-hmm. they cast out devils and do good works." And He would say, "Get from in front of Me, ye that work iniquity." Meaning He don't want you really calling His name. He wants you to call God the Father. But let me move on. I mean, that's not what that means. Oh, brother, come on. If, if that's the case, then the apostles are all fallen. Okay, okay, cool. Whatever. Okay, let me let me let me let me move on. That was a terrible point. Like bro. Brother Stanley. Brother Stanley. Was Jesus mm-hmm. in the beginning? Was Jesus in the beginning? That's what it says in John one. Yeah. As, as a God. That's what it says. The word was God. Okay, that's your standpoint. Okay. Uh can you show me where Jesus himself said he is God, worship me. I'm talking about Jesus saying. Oh, no, he could not say that if he's, if he's in the down low. Okay, there's that's many cool. There's many cool. times he had to tell people, hey, don't tell people I did the miracle. Don't tell people I resurrected. Don't tell people I, I healed your blindness. Don't tell nobody. But so there's times that he kept things in a down low. There's plenty of scriptures that show that. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Now, mm-hmm. you mentioned John, 1 John chapter 3, verse 16, and it said the word God in it, right? But yes. in my King James Version, there are brackets, meaning mm-hmm. that word God. Oh, is yeah, Brother Minister told me that oh. one. Yeah, he told me that. Okay, now, now, let me go, let me go on. The RSV, mm-hmm. the A- ASV, the WEB, World English Bible, Young's mm-hmm. Bible, NIV, and the Vulgate doesn't have the word God there. And, yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. That's, and it's a mistranslation on the King James point. And it and let me read to you what it says uh, with the NIV. Well, why, why would you say it's a mistranslation? What based on why? Because when they put that there is a mistranslation to get people to think, oh, that's God talking. That's no, no, no. But you say, in order for you to say something is a mistranslation, you have to show something else with more authority to say that it's not. I'm getting ready to. I'm getting ready to. Hold on. Hook it up, but it says, it up. hold on, hold on. It's, it's NIV, John, 1 John chapter 3, verse 16. It says, this is how we know what love is. 
Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. It says Jesus Christ and not God. So you say you say NIV. You say NIV is more authoritative than the King James. Not not just the NIV. I said R S no no no. I know I know, but these Bibles that you are quoting from, I hope you realize that they're from Westcott and Hart. Westcott and Hart were false prophets. Do um um Stanley? Yeah yeah. Look it up. I'm talking about different versions. Look it up. These Bibles you're quoting from are um are heathenistic Bibles. That um, okay. I, I, and I'm sorry, I don't believe the NIV and a lot of the RSV and a lot of those things that came from Westcott and Hort and the um the, the um the um the text of the um the Latin Vulgate they found um to create the New Testament and that's what the Jehovah Witnesses based their Bible on too. I'm not buying into that. Um, four one two eight four nine. You're live on the Bay Talk for you. Hello. Hey, what's up, man? How are you? How you doing? Can you hear me? Yeah, we're Loud here. and clear. Loud and clear. Oh, yeah. Hey, I'm calling from Pittsburgh, PA, and want to say uh, God bless to to both. It's a great debate. Me and my girls have been listening to it the whole time. Great work. Um, I had a question. If I'm not mistaken, was there a scripture that says um, that uh, we cannot enter heaven in the flesh because the flesh is sin? Um, I, think he's, I, I think he's trying to refer to in Corinthians where it says that the um, I think he's saying where uh, flesh and blood can't enter into the kingdom of heaven. Yeah, that's what in First Corinthians fifteen you're talking about. Yeah, verse four, but, verse fifty. Yeah, but you that, said that's, that. Go ahead. But but that text is very um is very mistranslated. Mis-tran- translation. If you read the context, um, you see what it says here. It says, um, where is it? Yeah. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Listen to the context. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. So then he's not talking about an incorrupted flesh. He's talking about a corrupted flesh. Your flesh now cannot enter into the kingdom. Only a glorified, only a glorified flesh can. Only glorified, glorified flesh not can. An incorruptible, not an incorruptible flesh is what's going to be able to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Not a corruptible flesh. You see, when Adam and Eve lived in two sides of the spectrum, when Adam was born, he was made in the likeness of God, but he had flesh and bones. Because when Eve was, came out, he said, flesh is my flesh, bones are my bones. That flesh could enter into heaven if, it wants, if, if God would choose to, because that flesh was incorrupted. It was not corrupted. So then, but when he sinned, his flesh now became incorrupted. So that kind of flesh cannot enter into the kingdom, because it has sinful flesh in it. It has sin, it has sin in it. Can I can I can I uh, can I come on with that? Yes. Oh, okay, yes. the brother made a good point because you're saying Jesus right now is God, but also man, and you're saying he's flesh right now. Now, yes. if you read like you said, the context yes. when they're resurrected, yes. there's not going to be a flesh body. It's going to be raised a spiritual body. So is uh, Jesus uh, a spiritual uh, body or a flesh body right now? No, no, I disagree. I believe that a corrupt, uh, an, in, uh, an incorruptible body. An uh, incorruptible flesh and bones is a spiritual body. You, okay, say that one more time so I can make sure I'm hearing an what you're saying. Incorruptible, an incorruptible, an incorruptible flesh is a spiritual body. Now keep this in mind: it's a difference between spirit and spirit spiritual. Completely this different. A different. Sorry. Between, this is a difference between spirit flesh and, and spirit spiritual. Too. Flesh and spirit, same thing. Flesh and spirit? No, no. I didn't say spirit. I said spiritual. I no, said no, spiritual. That's the question. Is flesh and spirit the same thing? No, they're not. There's the, there's the answer right there then. So is Jesus right now, is he spirit or is he flesh? He, is, uh, he has a spiritual fleshly body. Is it Come on, man. Now spiritual? these are word games, bro. No, it's not. Let me ask you something, brother minister. Let me ask you something. Are you, do you have flesh right now? Yes, and I got a spirit is what you're going to say. No, 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 no. Can you be spiritual with your with your flesh? I can be spiritual, but I'm not a spirit alone. Exactly my point. So, so you so, need to so, tell me that you can be spiritual even though you're not bearing spirit. That's very interesting. What, so what do you mean you're not bearing spirit? That, you're made up of spirit right are, now. Are you, a, are you a spirit? You're made up of spirit. No, are you a spirit? I have the spirit in me. So, to, in you. so you're saying that you're not what's in you. You just have it in you. So, 
So if I die, when I die and I resurrect, I'm going to resurrect with a spirit body. So then now, when you resurrect, you can, you can never say, I have a spirit in me. Now, you can't say that anymore. You say, I'm not going to say I'm a flesh. No, I'm become a spirit, just like Christ. Okay, that's my point. Is, my point is, when you say you have a spirit, you're saying that you're not that. You're saying I'm that you saying when have you get to the you. kingdom, your your spirit. Do you deny that? My, Jesus Jesus said he came in flesh and bones. When he appeared to the apostles, he appeared in a glorified body, and he said the spirit has not flesh and bones like you see as I have. So he's saying that he has flesh and bones. So right now, Jesus, right now, you're claiming Jesus is God, but he's a man with flesh. Right now. I didn't claim it. The Bible says it. Jesus himself said it. Jesus himself said it. Let's go to the people. Let's see if they got any more questions or comments. Um, 315-863. You're live on the Bay Talk for you. 315-863. Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. How you doing, brother? Hello, this is Salmai, representing hey, the Trade One Pound. We want five, y'all anointed. Shalom to everybody. Hey. Hey, what's going on, bro? Brother y'all Anthony anointed in the house, house baby. <laughs> y'all yeah, anointed yeah. in the building, huh? The guy. <laughs> hey, the Trade One Pound, man, and don't you forget it. The three one five, Trade One Pound, all day, every day. But let's get to the Amen. <laughs> I, uh, even though I don't. Agree with Brother Stanley a hundred percent on mm-hmm. his on his view. I do also, I do believe that Jesus is God. And once you read the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter four, then God says God to Jesus. You know that ends the debate. But we're not dealing with letting the scriptures be the final word. We're dealing with man's pride and arrogance. But also, I wanted to say that the people of the Old Testament they didn't know that their God was going to come. That's why they didn't. That's why a lot of people rejected Jesus because they didn't understand that in the beginning that was Jesus, who was that God of the Old Testament. But I want our uh, brother minister, if you could, to turn to Isaiah forty-eight. Say that again. Isaiah forty-eight. Go ahead. You get, can you read it? I'm going. I'm going there. Isaiah forty-eight. Go ahead. And sixteen. Mhm. It says, "Come ye near unto me." Hear ye this, I have not spoken in secret from the beginning. From the time that it was, there I am, and mm-hmm. now the Lord God and his spirit has sent me. So what, what's, what's being discussed right here in Isaiah 48, please? Can you uh, explain to the, to the audience because it says that oh. God. God. Um, uh, from that verse, I haven't read the whole context from that verse. I believe that, would, that, you're, that it would be implying that somebody was sent by the Lord God. Did he send himself? What's that? Did the Lord send himself? No. Okay. Is that what you're saying? That that enough. verse is implying that the the Father or the Father or the Lord God sent himself? Are you implying that, or saying that that's what that means? Yes, because I believe that the Lord, that God that was in the Old Testament, came into the flesh was Jesus Christ, as Brother Stanley said. All right, brother yeah, Stanley, do you yeah. is that what you, how you take that too? Pretty much exactly what he's saying that this is talking about he's talking about a, a prophecy dealing with Christ being sent. So, yeah, but it, but it, I don't think he said I, what I think he's saying is well he actually said it is that the Lord God sent Himself. I don't think you I don't think you. No, believe no, he's that. asking you. He's asking you. No, I don't believe that. that. So I'm going to ask the brother: Does he believe that? He doesn't believe that. No, I'm yeah, not talking about Stanley. Yeah, I'm talking about the yeah, guy that said it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sound on that. You can reply. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. What's up? What's the question now? Salman, do you believe that uh, that that was saying that the Lord God himself sent Himself? I believe that that was a prophecy concerning the God that He was sin. Amen. Now you now you switched up er, earlier. So so what was the purpose? Well, I understood that. I understood that. I understood that. I That's asked, what he was saying. I asked you, brother, brother minister, because you don't okay. believe that the Lord God will send the God. No, the way you asked when when you, when I asked you when I answered the thing, you actually said so you don't believe that, that that God would send Himself. That's what you said. It's recorded. That's what you said. Well, no, he's, he's, he asked you the question because he believes that you only believe that God is only one person. That's the reason why he's asking. Do you believe that God must be talking about Himself in this case here? But let him explain it. You're, you're you're explaining for everyone else that's, that's asking the question. Let them explain. I'm sorry. It because... Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead, brother. <laughs> Okay, thank you. According to the prophecy, the Lord God sent God. That's what I said, and if I 
if you misunderstood what I said, then I'm sorry for the confusion. Okay, no, you fixed it now. You switched it. That's good. So, it, so I'll go back to it in verse 16 where it says, "And now the Lord God and His Spirit has sent me." Where does it say that he, that uh, and the Lord God has in His Spirit has sent God? Where does it say that in that verse? It, you can't read it verbatim. It's, you're not going to read that the Lord God will send God verbatim. You have to put it together. The prophecies can, contained in the book of Isaiah was for that God, like Isaiah 9 and 6, Isaiah 35, Amen. 4 through, Amen. 4 through uh, Isaiah 35, 4 through. Uh, I, I mean, that's the only verse you gave me, so, I, I, so that's, that's the only way I can answer that. Now, do you believe the Old the Old Testament God, do you believe it's God the Father or God the Son? I'm talking to the man. That's yeah, I apologize, Brother Minister. I just got to let people know we're in the overtime part of the show. Once again, it's the overtime part of the show. I see people, you know, they call thin. You know, I appreciate all your support, guys. We have a lot of people here right now. I'm going to have to take two two more questions, guys. i got to take only two more questions. we got to get to this final statement. You know, time is definitely running out. So, I want, you know, once again, you know, I appreciate you guys for calling into the overtime part of the show. Is Jesus God Revisited? My special guest is Brother Minister and Stanley Solvain. Once again, you know the number, 646-716-7320. Let's take two more questions and comments, and after that, we're going to go into the final statement to wrap this pretty much up. Um, 888-387. You're live on the Bay Talk for you. Yo, we, make, we, we, we do it all, it is depend, depending on the schedule, because a lot, a lot of brothers are spread out. You know, so yeah, sometimes eight, uh, we hello? meet up at the park. Sometimes oh, we'll, eight, we'll eight, you know, meet at another eight, eight, home. But uh, that's, that's, that's a beautiful thing. He's doing tour. Yeah, I think he's uh, <laughs> talking to somebody else. Hold on. Yeah, we got to go to the next person right here. <laughs> seven one eight four seven one. You're live on the Bay Talk for you. Any questions or comments? Yeah, uh, what's going on? This is Felix. I'm out of New York, student at Absolute Bible Truth. And um, I'm not really trying to get into this doctrinally because I don't 100% agree with either party. Um, but I do lean more towards Stanley's side, but I just wanted to know, because I didn't listen to this whole debate entirely, you know, I got to go and check out the archive, but um, I want to know, what is Brother Minister's current belief system, uh, being that the Bible, in your view, is uh, faulty? Um, I, I just want to know, that's what I've been thinking about, and I just wanted uh, you to just say it on air, what is your current belief system, what do you hold on to, or... Is it just vague as in you believe in a creator? So you can go ahead. My my current my current uh religious view or, or not religious view, um, stand is that I don't believe in uh religions and um uh, that we need to study and search truth. Um I still believe in God, but I do not believe um that Christianity is the way to get the truth about God. I don't believe necessarily that it's uh, Muslims is the way to get to God or whatever. All these different religions is made up by man. Um, so that's where my, my stand is that most people on here call me an atheist. Could but you, as my stand, my stand is right now is I do could, believe in a God. Could you delve more into what you do believe in and not what you don't believe in? Because I, I could tell, you know. Currently, 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 I believe there is a God. I believe God is a spirit. I believe that we can we can contact or get in contact or God is in contact with humans if we continue to seek for Him. I still do I do believe in that. I believe in right and wrong. I believe in you understand what I'm saying. That's where I'm at now is what I'm saying. All right, uh, Stanley, you you can reply because we got to move on. Go ahead, Stanley. Oh no, there's nothing for me to say in that part. All right, uh, once again, let me go to the people. I don't see any more questions on the switchboard, guys. If you're still here, you got any further questions, you know, you can press the number one, and I'll add you in real quick. Once again, you know the number, 646-716-7320. Let's press the number one, and I'll add you in the conversation. Uh, you know the number, once again. If not, we're going to go into the final statement. I see a lot of people listening into the show. I'm not going to add you in unless you press the number one. So, you know, press the number one, and I'll add you in the conversation. I appreciate the support, guys, live on the Bay Talk for you. Let's see who is the next person. Let me try this brother again. Hold on one second. Hold on one second, guys. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Uh, all right. 888-387. You're live on the Bay Talk for you. 888-387. You're live on air. All right. Well. Was that the guy, was that, the guy that was talking to somebody else? 
Yeah, try to forget. <laughs> try to give him a second chance. Oh, yeah, he needs to stop talking now. <laughs> yeah, try to give him a second chance, you know. All right, so let's go to the next person, 252-822. Bro, I think it's Raheem. What's up, brother? You back? Yeah, back, back one more game. Because <laughs> I want to <laughs> yeah, I want to yeah, uh, Basically, I love both brothers. They, you know, they do anything, and it's respectful. God and bless you, too. We love you, too, man. Bless yeah, you, man, because I'm enjoying it. So I, I have no Great ill job. will against uh, Brother Sandy. He has his view, and um, Bubba uh, Minister has his view. But, you know, the, the way it is, but it's a beautiful debate. But I wanted to ask Stanley uh, this. If you could turn to Isaiah chapter 43, verse 10 to 12, a real quick. All right, I'm getting there right now. You want me, you want me to read it? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be there in two seconds. I'm here. Okay. 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 It says, ye are my witnesses with saith Yahweh, and my servant who I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me, and understand that I am he. Then it said, they got the, uh, the, the marks in the back. Before there mm-hmm. was no Elah, I'm using the mm-hmm. word, the transliteration, form, neither shall mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. Yahweh is saying he never formed a deity, a God, before mm-hmm. him or after mm-hmm. him. And, mm-hmm. and, then when you read, and then when you read down, he's talking to those people who serve a strange God, and he exactly. basically said to them, now, now check this out, check this out, hear me out. And he's mm-hmm. actually saying, since I didn't create or form a deity next to me, beside me, and I mm-hmm. don't know of any, you shouldn't be doing that either. So how I can agree. he even be God? Okay, that's all I, I, that's, agree. That's all I had to say. That's all I had to I say. I agree. The question, so right the question there, I would have to ask for you is, do you believe okay. Jesus is Savior? Do you believe Jesus is Savior? Of course. And let me let me of give course. you my read, read. Read 11. Read 11 for me. I, even I, I, even am, I am yeah. the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. So then we, if we look Stanley, at things Stanley. in context, then we Stanley, understand it's not talking about that. Stanley, let me read it. That's what you're saying. It says, oh, I, right. even I, <laughs> all right, all right, right. <laughs> I, even I, am Yahweh. That's the word, uh-huh. Lord, with the four capitals, yes. Yahweh. And beside uh-huh. me, there is no Savior. So Yahweh, okay. okay, Yahweh is the Savior, and Jesus is the Savior if you, what what Jesus said, I am the yeah. light, the, the way, and the truth, right? Uh, and God and is light. And, if you, follow, and if you follow me, you will, your soul will be saved. So he, he's the Savior also. So that, but, but over here it says, beside me, there is no Savior. So you okay, see, okay, if, we, okay, if, we, okay. if we were to apply your logic for the verse before that, then we're saying we, beside me there is no God, then you have to okay. apply the same rules in verse 11 okay. as well. Beside me there is no Savior. So that means Jesus is not God and Jesus is not Savior either. Then we have to apply that. But if you take the whole thing in context and understand it, you pointed it out perfectly. In verse 12 and on, it was talking in comparison to other God's not dealing with the, the, um, the triune or the volume God, dealing with the, the Father and the Son. It's not talking about that. It's talking about other entities aside from God that created the world. All right. Uh, we got to be- definitely move on. Raheem, I apologize. We've got to move on. But, Brother Minister, you want to reply real quickly before we go to the next person? Go ahead. Uh, the other thing I want to say is this. If the Lord, if he's referring to the Lord our God and his servant, who is he referring to in that verse? Say again? He's, in, in verse 10, he said, you're my witnesses, said the Lord and my servant who mm-hmm. I have chosen. Mm-hmm. Who's he referring the to prophet. when he says that? The prophets. The prophets. Say that again? The servant, the prophets. Okay. That I may know, and then he said, I am God. Who is that speaking? Is that Jesus speaking, or is that God the Father speaking? It's not, it's not identified. It's not identified. That, that guy, the, the, the one, the, the representative of who's, the, who's Yahweh in that position is not identifying whether or not he's the father or the son. Uh, but, but we know that either one of them can claim that. Right. So two, so two separate people, two separate peoples can claim one God. Yeah, in their understanding, being attached to the other, they are connected to one another. All right. A lemon can claim lemonade as long as he's in the lemon juice. All right, guys, once again, I'm going to take, uh, I know I said two more, but I'm trying to take some more, maybe two more. <laughs> two more questions, guys. I'm trying to get as much people as possible before we get into this final statement. Once again, the show is archived, 
So you can always uh, go back to the website, www.blogtalkradio.com. And once again, people, I appreciate your support. Make sure you copy and paste this show. Put it on your, put it on your Facebook page, your Twitter page. Let people know about the Bay Talk for you because without your support, guys, you know, we can't go but so far. So please support the show. Put it out there. Let people know that the Bay Talk for you is hot. You know, we have the classic debates out here. Definitely uh, we have a new season. So let people know about the Bay Talk for you. Spread that word. Let's get the next person out here. Uh, three one five three one three. You're live on the Bay Talk for you. Hey, shalom everybody. This is brother Ben Trey from Syracuse. Uh, shalom family, brother uh, Minister, brother Sal, mm-hmm. brother God Raheem, uh, brother Anthony, brother Kev, brother Aaron, brother Shaala, brother Josh, brother Prophet Six One Nine. The Bay Talk for you. <laughs> the Bay Talk for you is back. <laughs> back at Go it down again. They're going down the road. I already know. <laughs> amen, um, amen. Um, I just started listening uh, during a question, questions um, segment, so I can't really ask the, the only question I really have, maybe Brother Stanley already went into it, but did you go into Matthews 3 and 16 to 17, and what's your interpretation on that? And shalom, and have a good night, y'all. I appreciate you, brother Ben Trey. From your, oh yeah, uh, good, good. Three one five. You said you asked the question, Stanley. He said he said Matthew three sixteen. Three sixteen and seventeen. He said. It says here, and Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, and lightning and lighting upon him, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, "This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased." Well, as for my position, and I, I'm assume, I'm, I, I'm completely going to be in agreement with Brother Minister in this one. We both believe that Jesus is being declared here the Son of the Father, which is God as well. All right, guys. Let me take another caller before we get into this final statement, guys. Let me take another caller. Once again, we're now listening to the Bay Talk Radio Season 4, trying to get as much callers as possible. Uh, 631-612. You're live on the Bay Talk for you. Have any questions or comments? Six three one six one two. You're live on the air. Six three one six one two. Going once, going twice. Hello. All right, there we go. How you doing, my brother? <laughs> well, nice. Nice. Yes, I was on your first time um, listener. Uh, my name is Fernand from uh, Baldwin, New York, in Long Island. Hey, how you doing, I'm brother Stanley? Oh, praise <laughs> God, man. That's my cousin. What's going on, bro? <laughs> I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Oh, man, God bless you, bro. God bless you too, man. This is a great thing you guys are doing here, you know. Um, I, I'm loving it. I have a question for um, Brother Minister. Okay. okay. All right, um, you said that um, you believe in um, God the Father. Mm-hmm. Okay. Therefore, um, to know God the Father, you have to study from something to know him, right? Yes, sir. All right, the way you speak, um, you said the Bible has faults in it. I didn't hear that last word. That said the Bible's what? The Bible has fault in it? Yeah, it has errors and contradictions. Okay, so how do you learn f- um, about God? From where? Well, from from the from when I first started, I came through the Bible. I used to I used to, I don't know if you know the history of it, but I used to believe that you could only uh, uh, take truth from the Bible. So you so, you you study from um so so through the, from 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 the faulty Bible to know about God the Father from mm. studying from the Bible and doing st- studying is where I actually came to my understanding. Do you understand what I'm saying? So for instance, like my take on this debate is Jesus is not God. If you ask me where I got that from, I'm going to tell you I got it from the Bible. So in other words, you go and pick and choose what you want to. No, I by. used to be. No, that's the thing. I never pick and choose nothing. But when I was in, I used to be a. I used to be a preacher. But I always wondered why there were so many different denominations. And I said, why are you picking and choosing? Why is there different thoughts? Why is there different this? When I went to study each one of the so-called denominations of Christianity, I began to see now where this comes from. And now I just I came to the conclusion that there's errors, mistakes, contradictions, and I can show them with the Bible. But I, but I'm not in, I'm not in a position right now to deny that there's a God. Is that is that uh, is that understand, understandable? Nah, right, brother Stanley, you got you got it, man. I gotta move on. I'm gonna take one more question after this. But guys, Stanley, you can reply real quick. Okay, I think the I, I think that the question is posing the idea that 
um, if we are debating what the scriptures are saying about God or anything, what the mm-hmm. scriptures are supposed to be teaching, if we're trying to find truth, why would we go to a corrupt source to try to determine which truth? And if we go to the corrupt source, how do you know which part of the source is corrupt and which part isn't? Well, so I, that, I, that, that, I, that's, I, that's a problem. That's a problem. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree one hundred. I agree one hundred percent with what you're saying. So, for instance, like when you made a statement earlier that mm-hmm. it was a mistranslation of something. My question is: Does a mistranslation corrupt that book? Wait, 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 wait. When I said I didn't say I didn't say the King James was a mistranslation. I said that um, that no, the somebody, Bible that somebody put it out of scripture to you, and you said that's a mistranslation. The, the, the NIV. I'm talking about the NIV. Now, the reason why I don't I know, we have to go back. I, I read. I researched the NIV. If you do, you believe the there's NIV, some errors in the King James version? Um, the errors that, that that are there is not something that's taken away from the spiritual errors. So spiritually speaking, I, no, there's no errors. But they but, are. But what I'm saying is, is there errors, errors in yes. the Bible? Is there errors in the Bible? Be, yes, there are. But it's spe- okay, so I'm asking. Or dealing with it doesn't take away from the from the spirit of the. Of, of the yeah. Of the so I want to answer that guy. I want to answer the question because, like, you 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 came in again to explain what he meant. So what I'm mm-hmm. saying is, if he if he would admit that there's errors in the Bible, I don't know if he means that that could be corrupt. So does that mean that you can stop getting answers from something? Because if there's error, if something has error, it's corrupted. We just both agree. Yeah. Yeah, guys, we got to definitely talk. got to take one more caller, guys, and then we're going to get into the final statement. Once again, it's Debate Talk for You Season 4. Once again, you know the website, www.blogtalkradio.com slash Debate Talk for You. We're in the overtime part of the show. I know my debaters, you know, they put a lot of energy out here, you know, a lot, of, a lot of knowledge out here for the masses. And once again, as I always tell the people, whatever information that you receive out here on Debate Talk for You, make sure you gather the notes and make sure you study to show that self approved, do the research. And, you know, that's the most important part of the show. Make sure you do the research and take down the information. I'm just going to take one more caller, and then after that, we're going to go into the final statement, guys. We've got to wrap this pretty much up. I appreciate all of your support, and make sure you tune in next Friday at Debate Talk for You. Um, 708-705, you're back on Debate Talk for You. Yeah, this is Brother Marcel again. Um, real quick, Brother Minister, not you didn't just say it was errors. You also said it's not the word of God. So I just wanted to clear that, clarify that up. Another thing I wanted to say is, um, you know, Stanley was right. You know, uh, Jesus even ate fish, so he had a uh, he 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 ate physical food. A spirit can eat physical food. He had a glorified body. Now I wanna uh I I want you to uh, I wanna I wanna bring out two points and I want you to uh, respond to them. Uh, uh, yes or no question is was Jesus just a, a, a mere creature? <clears throat> Was Jesus? Was he a man? If I, I can answer, if he's a man, I'm gonna say yes, because they don't use okay. mere creature. But I, I'm gonna say if you're asking me if that means man, I'm gonna say yes. Okay, I mean, well, when I say creature, I mean was he created? You know, that's what I mean. Okay, so okay, so he was just a man. He was created, right? He was a man, according to the scripture. Okay, okay. that would make him a creature. Okay. Okay. And re- <laughs> Uh, and Re- it's all right. You can admit it, brother. <laughs> in Revelation five six, uh, no, in Revelation five thirteen, uh, I want you to explain this. Then I want to bring up one more point. It says, "And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such yeah. as and all that are in them, heard I saying, blessing and honor and glory and power be unto yeah. him who sitteth upon the throne." Let's stop right there. This is my point. If Jesus was just a man, mm. he's supposed to be worshiping the one that sits on the throne. Now, we know the one that sits on the throne is the Father. Mm-hmm. Jesus should be in the category of worshiping. See, they exhausted this. That's why they went to, to, to the lens of saying every creature in heaven, mm-hmm. on earth, under the earth. That's exhaustive language. Should mm. worship one that sits on the throne. If Jesus was just a man, why is he getting the same worship as God, which we know God don't share his worship or his glory? So you can explain that. Then I want to bring out one more point. I, okay, I, and uh, uh, brother Marcel, I got we got we got time, time, brother. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's good. Hello. 
Good, good, good yeah. scripture, and and that's that's the very point that I'm also saying with the totality of that question, that verse, and what me and Brother Stanley said is is Jesus a man right now, right now, up there? He's a man, but you're also saying he's God. So you're saying God, God is also a man right now. I don't believe that. Jesus is the God man, but uh, address the question. Address the question. Why is why isn't Jesus worshiping the one that sits on the throne? I don't know. Okay, I know because he's God. Thank you, my okay, brother. But is, he, is, is there the person on the throne God? Yeah, the one on the throne is the Father. Is he God? Yes. Okay, and Jesus is also a separate person, but he's also God, right? You, you, so you get two gods, man. That's two gods. No, 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 no. Listen, listen, listen. There's two separate people up there. There's two no, gods. No, no, no. Separate people. Listen, separate, two different persons, one God. We keep telling you the same thing. Not two different gods. Do two you different the Holy Ghost is, is also a God? Is like three? Can you say three in one? Yes. Yes, I do. Now, now, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Can God, is God limited where he can be multiple people? The Almighty God, the Father, whoever you think Jehovah is. Is he limited in that he can't be multiple people? If he wanted to be a hundred and people, but one God, can he do okay. that? According to this book, the Bible in monotheistic ways, he can't be. He can't be three people. Yeah, guys. Yeah, I appreciate you, man. We got to definitely get into the final statement. I appreciate you guys, man. You're in the lion's den. <laughs> Now we get down to the Lions then, guys. Once again, another classic debate. We've got to get to the final statement, guys. I appreciate everybody for calling in. We have more questions, but time doesn't permit. I can't get to everybody as usual, but let's get into this final statement thing. And uh, once again, make sure you tune in next Friday. I have a show actually on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday next week. Just to let you guys know in advance, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Uh, Wednesday is going to be a show at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, Thursday is going to be 8 p.m. and of course Friday 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, make sure you go to the Facebook page so you can check out the schedule. That's www.facebook.com slash debate talk for you. We're about to go into this final statement, guys. We got to get to the final statement. All right, of course, we're going to start off with uh, Stanley with his final statement. That's going to be seven minutes each. Then we'll open up his phone line. And Stanley, you can go ahead. All right. Um, I think it was pretty clear that um, the, the idea is, con- is the confusion of the spiritual language and the earthly language. And I think that was the tenor of a lot of the questions and a lot of the confusion that people have today. Um, you see, if you understand that, the reason why people are confused about who God is is because we have the author of confusion living with us. He is supposed to be stealing seeds that is laid in the ground of our mind. And he does a lot of good job with that a lot of times. When I say good, I mean skillful, of stealing these seeds. But I just want to just um, just throw a whole lot of list of scriptures so that people can write down their notes and explain to you that um, that Jesus and God, uh, Jesus can be God, and, he can, and at the same time he can still be the Son of God. When you say God, you have to specify God the Father or God the Son. Jesus is God the Son because he's the Son of God the Father. That has to be cleared. There's two individuals. That, that make up one, when you think of the man and the wife, and I keep saying this all the time, you don't think two marriages because there's two individuals. The marriage is the union. That's what we're saying. God in itself is a marriage. It's a plural. It's a plurality. That marriage is a one person. That marriage is a spiritual way of saying one person. And Jesus himself clearly stated there are no more two. There are no more two. You still see two. So what is he saying? There are no more two. You see, if you don't understand spiritual language, um, then then you just still have the earthly mind. The mind is deceitfully wicked above all things. Who can know it? If if you focus on the carnal mindset, trying to understand spiritual, it's like trying to take basketball rules and use it on baseball. You'll always get a technicality. It won't work. All right. Here's some scriptures for you to meditate on. Malachi 3.6 says, God never changes. Jesus never changed as well. If you go to Hebrews 3.8, it says that there. God is the only Savior. It says it in Isaiah 43.11. It says it in Jude 1.12. It says it in Titus 2.10. It says it in 1 Timothy 4.10. It says it in Luke 1.47. At the same time, Jesus is the only Savior. 
the Father and the Son um, to be the Savior of the world. Ah, Father and the Son, set the Son to be the Savior of the world. So that's John 4, 14. Um, you also have 2 Peter 3, 18, 2 Peter 1, 1, John 4, 42, Titus 1, 4, Luke 2, 11. You have Acts 4, 12, 2 Timothy 2, 10, Hebrews 2, 10, Hebrews 5, 9. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. I just, I, um, oh my goodness, just do your research on that. It is clear, brothers and sisters, you've got to take all of the Bible. If you believe the Bible is corrupted, you cannot take parts of it and, and, and say, well, I just take that one. If it's so corrupted, why don't you just take the part that said that Jesus is God and, and leave off the other part that says he's the son of God? I mean, how are we going to trust any authority if, if, when we're looking at the corrupt book? If you have two milk on the table, one of them you told me has arsenic in it, and ask me to pick one and choose one and drink, I'm not going to drink either. I'd rather not even drink the milk at all because I don't know which one has the arsenic. How do you know which part of the book is corrupt? How do you know which one? So you see, this, this is the problem that we have. So that if we're going to take the part that say, oh, the Son of God, 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 okay, okay. The part that says that Jesus is God, uh, let's not talk about that part. That's the corrupt part. That's picking and shooting, brothers and sisters. You don't want to be caught into that. You see, I want to look at the scriptures with both eyes open, not one eye open. I, don't, I, I look at all of it, not some of it. And we clearly see that John the Baptist had clearly stated that Jesus was before him. And at the same time, you see Luke 1 and 2, where it said that Elizabeth gave birth first. And then Mary came months after that and gave birth to Jesus. But what did, Jesus, what did John mean by that? You see, people ignore these texts. He's telling you that Jesus pre-existed before him. And then you find in Revelation that Jesus is called the root of David. What do you mean by a root? That means David came from him. Brothers and sisters, even David called him Lord. You see, you have to put all the scriptures together. You can't take one and choose the other and then say, leave out the one and then and take the You can't do that. That's confusion. You think what I'm saying is confusion? That's confusion. What's being confused is that you guys are confusing yourselves when you are not taking all of it. When you've taken some of it and picking and choosing which one you want, that's confusion. Not what I'm explaining. What I'm explaining is confusing. What I'm explaining is confusing to the ear that's only taking parts of Scripture, and that's the problem. So I just want to just um, thank Brother Minister because Brother Minister gave a beautiful presentation. He gave his all, and he's a smart, intelligent young man, and I truly believe that he's truly seeking God. You know, and all the questions that, that people have called in, I thank you all for it. I thank you all for my friends that support Brother Sal and his show and um, support my ministry, but Stanley Sylvain. You can look me up, Cinema More Ministry, um, The Sangster. Either way, look me up on Facebook, YouTube, whatever. I'm going to start creating more videos, I promise you this time. But anyway, Brother Minister, thank you again. Um, God bless you all. Um, and happy, happy Sabbath. Shabbat Shalom. Take care. I'll see you guys next time. I'd like to finish up with the fact that the, the, the debate was, is Jesus God? The brother did present um, um, some good things, but he said that, that he's still saying that God is made up of two persons. We're talking about God here. God is made up of two persons, what he's saying. As far as the corrupt situation, uh, um, I agree 100% with you. So if you say there's errors, if you say there's mistranslations, if you say that there is, is that, that is corruption. So how do you know? We only grab these books and we only grab these, the Bibles or the Quran or whatever we do because we are told that it is from God. So that's why when you seek truth and you think of God, you go straight to those books. But I go into this anyways. He said he's of monotheism. The, the question is, is Jesus God? Is he that one God? But the brother turned around and said he's biotheism. What word is that? Where do we get that word from? The, the, he made up his own theological word, just like we're making up Jesus is God. We're making those up from different religious traditions that we're bringing brought by. The Jews don't believe, didn't believe Jesus is God. Judaism, which Christianity took from the Jews. But yet Christianity comes and makes Jesus God like other religions had made other people prior before Jesus God. But the whole point of the matter is this. The brother says, the scriptures say, whether you want to call them corrupted or not, 
The scripture saying the brother did not deny that God is the Father. When it was using the word God in these verses, it, if we want to use the New Testament, John three sixteen, all these other verses, uh, Acts chapter ten verse thirty eight, uh, one Timothy chapter two verse uh, five. When it's using God and Jesus in the same verses, notice it doesn't say a group of God or big, make some big up word. It says God referring to one person. Who is that person referring to? God the Father. And the brother did not deny it, even though he's good with his wordplay, and I do believe he has explanations at least that most Christians don't have. But the point of the matter in simple in simplicity is this. God sent his son. His son is Jesus. So that means God sent his son. If you're going to say God, uh, Jesus is also the son, you have to say there's two gods when you admit there's two separate people. And by the way, people, the Bible never once says God the Son. Not one time. So if you do say that you believe your Bible, then believe Jesus when he says that his Father is the only true God. If we're just mere men, and, and Jesus is supposedly God and men, then listen to what he said. Jesus said. Now, did he really say that? His Father is the only true God. So if anything, I actually believe your religion or your your Bible, I'm sticking up for it more than you guys are. Jesus said it. He says he has a God. Brother Stanley says that G, he admits it, that Jesus does have a God. If Jesus is someone separate from someone else, and Jesus has a God, that makes two people, and you say they're two separate persons. That makes two gods, people. Now you want to talk about wordplay or different people using stuff to corrupt your mind. They want you to believe that two people is somehow, and, and saying that they're different is one. They want you to believe Jesus is God, but oh, yes, someone different, who is his father, is also God. They're two separate people, but they're one. Now, come on, that's what religion has done to our minds, and that's where I take my stand. And then, so I still take the Bible to show you what the Bible's saying and look at all of the different views. Does God, does God really want all these different views of him? When Jesus spoke of God, was he speaking of a group of people and leaving himself out? And the brother clearly said that the Father God could not be God without Jesus. That's deep. So if anything, to, according to Christianity, would be heretical, that would be heretical. And God is not a divided person. And as he also made a claim that God never changes, and Jesus said that he's a spirit, so he, he didn't change into a man. God is a spirit. God is not a man, according to the Bible. But he never changes. So if, if God is, a, is not a man, and God is a spirit, and Jesus was a man, then Jesus cannot be God. Jesus would be, if you believe the Bible, Jesus would be a man approved of God, a man anointed by God, and a mediator between man and God. Notice that I'm only using the word God. That's what the Bible actually says, that Jesus was a man approved of God. Jesus was raised by the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who is somebody separate. So when you go to the Old Testament and try to apply it to Jesus, you yourself then would go to my old stands of a oneness because it's applying to God the Father and, God, and Jesus, so that's two beings, two separate beings. Now, you can either go to the point and say it's either a contradiction or there's too many different doctrines that is not logical, that's not correct, and it is confusing, and that's why Christianity is divided in 35,000 different denominations. And if God does that, I wouldn't believe that. I don't believe God causes confusion. That's my end. All right, you can let people know where they can find you as well, you know, via email, you know, your website information. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, you can see um, me on uh, uh, YouTube, Brother Minister. That's with the A, B-R-O-T-H-A-M-I-N-I-S-T-E-R. And I left up my old teachings that I used to teach, and it shows you where I came to the point where I'm at now up until the, uh, up to the update. You can also uh, see the book. We got published on Amazon.com called Faked Out by Faith. You can read it. It also tells the story and the journey of how I ended up where I'm at with it and breaks down things uh, easy. I'd like to thank our brother Stanley for uh, giving me the opportunity to talk. Hopefully we, we talk on the phone. He presented a good uh, point. Uh, but once again, I still believe he's saying that there's two gods. Help keep the show on the air. If you want to help, you can send me a donation through PayPal. The email is you at gmail.com or through cash at dollar sign Sal Showtime. Thanks for your support. Don't touch 
that dial. You're now listening to Debate Talk Free Radio.